Good morning. I'd like to call to order the Oak Island Planning Board. If we would stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Okay, do we have any adjustments to the agenda from anybody? Are we good? Okay, we yes. Have a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. moved. Oh, thank you. Second. All in favor? Approval of the minutes. Anyone have any changes or adjustments to 314 minutes? Gene? Yes, sir. Dole? No. Carrie? No. Mark? The um, page five is a typo um, for laundromat. Oh, oh, yes, halfway down the page. Mm -hmm. Moment. Good. Do I have a motion to approve 314's minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Three, three. One. Gene. No, sir. Nothing. Harry. No changes. Mark. Uh, page seven. Again, just a typo. Um, where the lower section starts with planning director Matt Kirtland, uh, about five lines down, uh, Mr. Kirtland's name is spelt incorrectly there. Show off. We're looking at. The thing about that is that uh, that is an auto text. Oh. oh, so I'm not sure why that one is odd, but anyway, <laughs> good catch. David, Mellon, do I have a motion to approve 321 minutes? First, second, I think. David, all in favor? No. We are to old business. The uh, proposed text, Matt. Um, I think first we have public comment, if there was any public comment. Oh, public comment. Anyone want in attendance like to speak accordingly? All right, Matt. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, so your first uh, old business item is a continuation of the discussion um, from last month. Uh, the uh, airport, uh, Cape Fear Regional Jet Port, has submitted a proposed text amendment um, to Article 10, Section 4 of the Unified Development Ordinance. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the applicant received some feedback from the board uh, last month, uh, and the board requested that they return with some proposed changes. Um, we reached out to them a couple of times, and uh, they seemed confident that they would be able to present those proposed changes at this meeting. So with that, I'd turn it over to the applicant to present what they've come up with and uh, discuss with the board. I think they've got some slides maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Let's turn it over to you guys. Good morning. <coughs> Good morning. My name is Howie Franklin, director of Cape Fear Jetport, 39 Augusta Drive, Oak Island. I've been here for 30 years. And uh, I love the area and love everything about it. Uh, I just like to reiterate: the airport is a separate district than everything else. It's a unique needs. Um, we are a public service, economic engine, low industrial park for you and for the whole county. We have 11 businesses on the airport right now. We plan on in the future having at least 11 more possibly 15 more. They'll be located on Airport Road next to the airport in a, in a <coughs> commercial zone. Um, when I first was brought to the attention 
of this signage issue. Uh, I, I, what I liked about it the most is that every event they offered that you will have every small event, big event that you have at Oak Island or any event that we have at the airport will be advertised immediately. But the one thing that caught my, my really attention, any emergency that we have at Oak Island or to, to disperse to the community would be on that sign. I think that's a tremendous asset to it. Uh, the airport is putting in 60 trees before this uh, idea came about. We were all, always planning on, we were planning on putting in, we are planting 60 trees along Beach Road and we plan on planting more. Um, we're interested in the, the way the airport looks because of our customer base. If we don't look organized and disciplined, they don't come in and spend money. We just got an $18 million grant from the state to develop the airport. Ladies and gentlemen, the billing permit fees that you will collect from that 18 million is incredible. Not only that, what we're doing with the 18 million is we're building 22 T, 20 T hangers and 400 by 100 hangers. All that is is tax dollars that come to you and the county. Um, the airport, according to North Carolina State University, we, as, as of right now, we bring in $383 million into the county and to Oak Island. And I, and I state again, 70% of the airplanes when I first got here was 90 to 95% went to Oak Island. Now it's 70% go to Oak Island. Uh, we have now airplanes coming in here. We had one came from Maine uh, and went to Bolivia, big jet. Um, so they're coming and from all over, and as you know, we're growing, I'm sorry. I wish it would maintain the way it was when I got here, but have you ever heard of a beach community? You have a waterfront beach community with the best weather on the coast from Maine to Key West. Have you ever thought, heard of any place located like that going downhill? No, gentlemen, we're gonna go, ladies, we're gonna go uphill. And it may, it's always tough to do that. So I appreciate you entertaining the information that we're gonna give you. We're really interested in getting good communications out, looking good, and making a good presentation for all com communities, all people in the area. I think I mentioned before, I'm not one of these people that ever got convinced that such a thing as trickle up, because the airport is a perfect example for trickle down. It's the big guys are paying for the little guys. If the big guys weren't come in, we couldn't even run the airport. Now, realize we don't get tax dollars for the airport. We don't, our budget is based on whatever income we have to, I have to earn the income to pay the people and pay my bills. So that's, any piece of revenue that we have is an asset to us and also is an asset to the community. I'd like to in <coughs> introduce my gentleman here. These uh, represent Gray, um, very successful company, com company around the state, and they will they like to give their presentation on what we'd like to put forward to you, okay? Any questions? Not, not at the moment. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Guy Williamson with Gray Outdoor. I think I met everybody. I think, David, you weren't here last time. Just want to introduce Gray Vic. Gray Vic is, is the um, owner of the company. And behind you, we put together a slide presentation that I think addresses some of the issues that y'all brought up last month. Are you able to see it on screen? Yeah, yeah it's on your laptop. Okay. Yeah, we're not yes. really sure, Matt, how this device works moving forward. Uh, so this way it goes forward, this way it goes backwards. Yeah, some of this is redundant, but we'll go through them real quick. So, so, um, and I guess are y'all able to read that? Y'all able to read on your yes. screens? Okay. So we put in there about us, um, you know, constructing the signs per the all the you know similar regulations in Brunswick County as well um, on the um, the building codes, uh, safety, uh, local wind loads. Um, also about the. Um, 
uh, minimal impact um, on, you know, we're not going to be adding any additional traffic um, and very little to no em environmental impact as well with the signage. Um, also on this area is obviously you guys are familiar with it, um, a heavily, highly commercialized area um, and having little or no impact on the, on the neighboring uh, communities. So this is what we originally had proposed and what we did a little bit different, it was hard to get the scale correct last time, is we used the same snipe on all four of these to be able to give you the scale. So the sign that we originally pr presented to y'all was 10 by 40 with a total height of 40 foot. And we're gonna show you the difference. And we added some landscaping, as you can see, some, some vegetation, some evergreen vegetation around the pole. We changed the Howie suggestion, the pole to a lighter shade, so it's less intrusive. And of course, you can see we added a uh, Oak Island welcomes you with some crepe myrtles and some azaleas. Okay. That's, that's the first one. The second sign. Can I bother you just a minute? I'm sorry. How tall is that sign there? It's um, proposed at 35 foot total height. If and you it, can toggle back real quick, just so, and then toggle forward, just so again. Um, okay, and then going forward. Yep, that's 40 foot. Yep, okay, thank you. And, and it, it almost looks like that even the 40 foot might have been actually like a little bit, you know, taller from the scale of, of the road. Uh, like like Guy said, it was it's almost, it's hard to get that exact it, scale it correct, is. but. Uh, we also reduced the size of the sign from a 400 square foot to the 10 by 30, which is 300 square feet. Um, so it was a reduction of you know 25% of the initial um, submittal. So that's the uh, the northern sign at Clems. This one is is the one, the second and last one that's right there by the bait and tackle shore store um, in the curve. And originally, as you can see, it's a 10 by 40 with a total height of 40 foot. And this one right here, we added some vegetation, as you can see, around the pole, changed the pole color, and reduced it down to 35 foot with 300 square foot. And one more time, if you'll just toggle for sure, me. Sure, no worries. No worries. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you. And so, so, so right there, as you can see, that sign right there, for us to clear their on-premise sign and not interfere with each other, that's the, is basically uh, as low as we can go with it. And this is the property line in which the 60 trees would be planted also? Yes, sir. Okay. So, and I, I also included the uh, structure plans. Um, I basically did this because we had, uh, we tweaked to try and get the scale correctly to show you this, because I knew there'd be some concerns about the reduction in the height from the original photos. Oh, what great chime in on this. And so I guess you guys kind of went through this last meeting about, um, you know, us providing the space for the town and the town events and anything that the town has going on um, and, and the ability to use that for, you know, even emergencies or hurricane evacuation routes. I mean, those type of situations or any type of emergencies that come up or the Amber Alerts, um, we're actually working on trying to get actually in there's like a rotation we have to, to build in there. So that's, that's something we're working on getting that um, in, in with a lot local law enforcement um, and I believe guy we were starting to make some headway on on getting into that rotation yeah and I had a question for y'all with that are, are y'all part of that emergency network I know Brunswick County is but do y'all have the ability to change any signage that y'all have in town or is that just done at the state level with the NCDOT signs I'm not sure um, I have to look into that. I believe it's probably done with the state, yeah. the state level. So see, this, I have to check in with our communications yeah, office. So what we're trying that. to do is we're trying to work. We're going to work with Brunswick County as well as FEMA to give 
not just these signs, but our other 34 digital signs uh, throughout the state, the ability to do the same. And you've got several calls in, have not had any callbacks from anybody yet. I'm sure they're very busy. And it's, it's something that we, we can obviously work directly with the town too for, hey, there's a missing, there's somebody missing. And, and, and we've actually, as an industry as a whole, has done really well. Um, and and uh, there was a couple instances last year where we've been working with the FBI and certain different, uh, with our, our state association. Um, and so we think we can make really a difference in the community. Also, a big part of our business is our nonprofit, um, donating to local nonprofits um, and giving them space, you know, for, for um, either little or no cost. Um, so that's a real big part of what we're, you know, us being involved with the community and be able to help with, with these assets. Um, and so the town and the jet port having that one shared slot per minute um, for any anything that the town wants to use it for for those local events, which I think would be obviously something very beneficial to bring more people out and um, to spur the economic growth as well. And give me a, I'm just not familiar with the terminology and all that. What does that mean exactly? Like the slot? Yeah, a one shared slot per minute. So I know these are eight second intervals. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. Uh, or that's what you're proposing. So within a 60, min, 60 second period, yes, sir. we would have one eight second slot either to the town or to the jet port. Yes, sir. That's Not correct. both. That would be for, for either one or either use. So what we actually be looking at would be four different displays as well here. So you would have four displays that would be, that would be each one would have a space. Because you've there. got the front and back of the two signs. Yes, sir. And each one would have that shared space for either the jet port or the town, which, you know, how to kind of work it. I mean, we, you can actually rotate. If the, the jet port and the town had something going on at both times, it would just basically rotate every other minute on one, um, if that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> we also talked about, like, in the event of a catastrophic emergency, and we touched on this about the entire sign we go to default. You know, if somebody's evacuating, you know, there's a major urgency. They don't need to be looking at ads. They need to get out of town or get back to their, their, their home. <clears throat> what are the height, what is the height of the newly constructed hangar that's to the south of the tackle shop? Over 35 feet. Over 35 feet. Okay. And we've had a change only just for our lights because the problem we've always had, ladies and gentlemen, is that we are. Howie, you want to. Sorry. <laughs> we, but the the mic will not pick you up sitting down, so. Yeah, thank, sure. Um, that's been a problem with our zoning because, and I'm not blaming anybody, I don't want to complain about history. But uh, when when we extended the runway and we we extended our building and things of this nature, first of all, my entryway to the airport didn't fit the zoning for Oak Island. Well, I explained, <laughs> we, we have different needs. The signage example I w never fit the zoning on Oak Island, so I built a $3 million building that the Senate and the legislators were very proud of, and I got a little, little crappy sign sitting up there because it wouldn't pass. Um, we had we had a light that for for safety we have to light those hangers and and they are only lit when they're needed and we where they're turned down but we had a big problem with it and we finally got that zoned uh, we also found out that we have another big hanger coming in and these are people are whale watchers being paid by the federal government to look at not only whales but everything believe it or not and the zoning came up with, we had a 50 foot setback, but everybody else had a set, 20 foot setback. The gentleman here, your zoning man, got into the books and realized that, that and changed that for us. So the thing that we try to get across, we are a different entity with different needs. Frustration part, I'm on, a, I'm on the uh, executive board of directors for airports across the state of North Carolina. There's not another airport in the state going through what we go through with the zoning. Uh, there's, some, there's some people in the area just came from Greensboro. 
and I asked, and they were on council positions in Greensboro. And I said, did your, did your airport ever have a problem with getting new things and zoning and things of that nature? They said no, because they knew what the economic impact of the airport was and the public service. So I mean, this is, the airport was originally built to help Oak Island. Yes, sir. Howie, one question, the sign up near Clems on a fish factory road? Yes, sir. Will that be on the commercial district or airport property? The airport property. Okay, thank you. And the location of the signs, the airport, the signage there, you can see those signs better than any other place. According to what my research, if you have a regular billboard, and the regular billboards, they get tired, and then you gotta change them, and then you don't get the information out that these do. But you only have three seconds to look at a, a sign as you drive by, what they say. Um, the location of both these signs, you're gonna see them from both directions, which is no, because of that curvature of the road. I mean, you can see my hangars from, from Airport Road. You know, so that's a big asset to the use of utilization of the signs. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. <clears throat> Do the signs emit any noise? No, they won't. They, I mean, there's they have a there's fans on them that keep the LEDs cool. So they do. I mean, they do make a little bit of. Um, you know, background okay. kind of uh, fans running, but um, nothing nothing that I, you really would notice. I mean, you can stand, if you stand under it and you, you flip the breaker, you can you can hear it, um, but it's, it's not, um, nothing that would be um, like intrusive to even the business that's at that location or, or the airport as well. And then brightness of the sign, you would follow the, the counties, uh, the UDO of the Brunswick County, the 0.3, Yes, sir. Put candles. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, that's um, and that was actually something we were we were you know, contemplating even like including into the presentation because it's something if, if we need to add that into the text as well. The same, you know, the same ordinance on um, our manufacturers. And typically, we're using Watchfire, which is a you know reputable manufacturer, right. um, and they their presets are set so it will dim at night. And then you have that, that like, you know, more maximum brightness during the day when the sun's at, at, at maximum height um, or brightness as well. Um, but they're all set to comply with those rules, which are also the state, the state rules as well. And then I, I assume that you would sign a letter stating that you wouldn't mess with those um, settings or anything to provide for the town. Right, and that's as similar as we do, county. similar to we do at the county as right. well. So, so, so that's, that, that's definitely something we can do as well. Yes, sir. And I, I'd recommend that if the board wanted to tackle that, you, uh, I mean, I've got those ordinances for the county in front of me right now, um, that you make that a part of your recommendation to add that to the text language so that we have something to, to fall back on on our local ordinances as well, if the applicant's okay with that. Yeah, yeah we, we, we actually were going to include it, and then if we, we – what I said was, hey, if we, we, we discuss it, that's something we can, we can definitely add in there. So we can send that text to you guys and add it in there as well. Matt, I got a question. Any idea? I tried to look it up, and I can't scroll fast enough. <laughs> Brunswick County, what's their height requirements on these type signs? Um, I was just looking for that, too. I, I, and I have to dig a little bit more because it's not, it looks like it's not specifically in there. They call, 30, it, they call it outdoor advertising. Feet, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. It's 35 um, feet. The... And the square footage requirement along this road in the county, uh, the maximum is 300 square feet. So what they've proposed essentially matches what the so county allows. So it's pretty much the same sign, same sign, size sign, blah, blah, as out there where the, at Lowe's Home Improvement, that LED sign that's on the corner right there. It used to be a jewelry place, and now it's a... It's fairly new. Yes, sir. Yeah. Bigger. Why did we... I thought we it's said probably it. bigger so on uh, 211 the county allows up to 378 square feet okay. which was their original right. proposal um, the LED signs on 133 right now that I showed you last month I believe one was 210 square feet and one was 240 based on the the public records I was able to find um, so a little bit smaller than what the the maximum the gentlemen have proposed here uh, but once again, the county allows up to 300, so if they wanted to replace those with the 300, they, they could under the county ordinances. Yep. 
And that sign at the corner is, um, I believe it was like a 10 by 33. So it's a little bit bigger. I think it was about 334 square feet or so. Um, but the height of that one is 35 feet as well. Okay, thank you. The county's yeah, I guess they're right here. I Gentlemen, for, for the public miles. benefit, um, these two signs would be in the Oak Island CLD district or in the airport district, just physically located? I believe one one is located in the airport property, and then the other the one, one is Clems. The Clems is actually in its airport. It's owned by the airport, but I believe the zoning district of that is CLD. Okay. On the Clems property. And then the one in front of the airport, is that in CLD? That is in the airport. That is AD. Yes, ma'am. Can we back up two slides, please? Yeah, sure. I believe it's two to the Clem sign. Uh, one more. Yeah, there. The Oak Allen Welcome You sign on the ground, the monument, that would be provided by? That's something we're going to do. Okay, and then, you know, could that, could the, Landscaping around it be maintained by like the Oak Island Beautification Club or something. I mean that would be great if we could we could work out something like that would be re really great because um, we're we're obviously in the sign business, not necessarily in the landscaping. Right. But um, you know we can. Um, if if they would like to do that, it's fine. But the airport take full responsibility to maintain and okay. make it look good because it's in our interest for it to look good. Right. And it's in your interest for it to look good. Right. But you know. If, on another note, ultimately, you could have a 35-foot-tall hangar on that corner, yeah. or you could have a something that would actually benefit the town. Are you limited then by the same height restrictions as the rest of Oak Island, 35 and 45 in the VE? So they or are 41. But, <clears throat> they are, but on the mainland, the, the height is a little bit different. You can go higher uh, as long as you increase the setbacks as well. So... Uh, so when the, the town there, council took there. up the, was it the buzzard, uh, what was the development that wanted to go higher than 41? Uh, that was Barnes, um, Barnes, Bluff. Barnes, Bluff. Barnes Bluff. They were limited. Is that because they did not have the setbacks? It's because they're not commercial. So commercial development oh. on the mainland can go higher as long as they increase the setbacks. Is there a limitation to the height? 55, I believe, is the maximum Thank cap. You. Yes, sir. <clears throat> And gentlemen, you mentioned, um, or you made the statement, there's no traffic or environmental impact. On what did you base that specifically on traffic impact? Well, it's, we're not going to be adding any additional traffic to the to the roadways. But so you didn't do any evaluation or analysis into distractions by drivers, things like that, based on these signs? No, we. Um, but we could provide that for you guys as well. There, there's... Um, there's a lot of like OAAA is our national organization for the industry, and they've done a lot of research on um, on the, that topic specifically that we could provide for you guys. There's uh, several reports online as well. There's been some private university studies done as well. And what did those to your in your high level assessment? What did they say? Uh, most of it was that there, the, the the billboards weren't weren't necessarily providing any more distraction than any other things on on the highways. Um, you know, significantly nowadays our biggest distractions are our cell phones. Um, yeah. So we've um, we've actually you know we've come to a lot of conclusions that it has more people looking up, which is typically better than looking down while they're driving. Okay. Um, so, but as, as far as um, I'd have to like dig into that report, but they it shows about how long people have to kind of view the sign. Um, and and they have they came to the most of the conclusions that the time that they would actually view it would be not enough to pull them away to, to create um, issues. But I'd have to kind of to get, send you that, um, that report so you could read through it. Or, and I didn't actually review it before I came in here, so I'm not necessarily prepared 100% um, to, to give you all the information, but we can definitely send it to you guys. This is what we discussed a few moments ago. This is what we're trying to work with Brunswick County as well as FEMA to get on the emergency alert system, become a vendor. I'll probably be able to give you all the ability to 
to do the same. And we have advertisers on, on digital billboards that we've actually done some training and they had an in-house artist that, that are very proactive in changing their own copy. You wouldn't have to call us up and say, hey, can you run this or run that? You got an in-house artist that can change copy from their keyboard. Yeah, and the ability for you to be able to access it too is obviously something that the town can do, but we can do it 100% turnkey for you guys as well. Um, so it's not gonna be a requirement to go hire somebody to run it. We can do all that. We have graphic designers that can do all the design work and, and everything for the town. So, um, but we can give access as well. Question on the contract. I know there's no, not a lot you can say, but going forward, I know it's typically like a 20 year, 25 year lease agreement that you'll have. After that lease agreement, is there any chance that the town would be kicked off of the agreement or would it continue on in perpetuity? My understanding would be that this would continue forever. As long as we were operating the signs there on the jet port, this would operate forever. Even if, if we even if we weren't the people <coughs> that were operating it, but, um, you know, my understanding this would this would be, you know, binding for as long as the sites were in play. But we could add an addendum to lease to ensure that as well. You know, ultimately, amber alerts, rip currents, um, safety issues. Rip current right there. Good timing on that. Yes. Uh, flood hazards, yep. evacuation stuff could go on the billboard. Absolutely. And then could they be timed simultaneously where you see the same message from one billboard to the travel time to the next billboard? They could be. They could be. They could time. They could. We've done that on another Carolina Beach Road. We have two that are you know similarly distanced apart. and. Right. We have some advertisers that want to have, they want to have one message here and then the next message afterwards, nice um, which we can rotate those and schedule different ones too as well. Then possibly the town wouldn't have to have the little pull behind the truck sign representing the town at Middleton and yeah. Long Beach Road. Beach Road. Because now a lot, a lot of the like, I know I noticed the one that, that goes over like over Long Beach Road past the bridge, right? So that's where we're doing a lot of the events now as well. Um, obviously, I always think to the the more times people like in advertising as well, it's it's the ex multiple touch points that really get people to to come sometimes. So seeing it one place and then seeing it again will really get them to to come out um, and support the town as well. Um, and then another big thing is that we deal mostly with local businesses, um, you know, local restaurants, attorneys, uh, retail. Um, you know, it's ninety plus percent of our business are local businesses as well. So we'll be, you know, supporting local businesses, and we're involved with the Southport Oak Island Chamber. Um, and so we'll we'll be, you know, ninety plus percent will be uh, local business um, around here, not as much of the national kind of businesses that. You know, tend do tend they do advertise on billboards, but they're a small, very small portion of our business. Mr. Franklin, you mentioned that there were eleven businesses currently on the air, in the airport district. Could you tell us a little bit more about those? Because uh, obviously, those businesses would benefit largely from this proposal that you're making. So, what? Who are they? Well, uh, the uh, we of course we have maintenance shop, aircraft maintenance. We have flight schools. We have air tour rides and things of that nature, but we also have the golf cart shop in my old terminal building. Uh, we have, we're proud to say that we're possibly the only airport in the country with a bait and tackle shop at our terminal <laughs> building, who was just voted as the number one bait and tackle shop in the state. Um, we, uh, so, and but the biggest thing that concerns me is the future, we, we plan on putting in uh, 11 to 15 uh, buildings that are uh, warehouses, office space, as, as an example, where the plumbers, electricians, uh, uh, dishwasher, the appliance people, everybody of those nature can have an office and um, have a uh, business there to store their goods. That's the future. Uh, <clears throat> I speak all over the country to airports, general aviation airports, and what I tell them, it, and it's been told to me, I didn't just come up with the idea, you can't, can't make money selling gas. 
the gas stations don't make money selling gas. They make money selling beer and cigarettes. Okay, so not that I want to sell beer and cigarettes, but you have to diversify. And as I said, we don't we don't tax people. We're not allowed to. Uh, we have to derive our own income. We're the high. We pay our employees the highest wage in the whole state of North Carolina. <coughs> we're we're fifth in economic impact out of sixty five airports in the state. Your airport. Is, the, is number five as far as economic impact is concerned. And we continue to plan on growing that. So, uh, and I, I, I still like the idea of the event thing and the, and the emergency thing to me is, vi is very important as well as advertising. Uh, and it's trickle, it is actually trickle up because small business will get more, more business, more rec recognition from this. That's been convinced by me, and that was a hard thing to convince because I ain't never seen anything trickle up. <laughs> it's got to go up before it comes down. Yeah. <laughs> so we just put together, um, there were some folks that, that have done these flyers for y'all. You're probably much more familiar with them than me, and, and she was nice enough to share this. But the point is, is I don't think you'd want to put that on the billboard. There's too much copy there, but you know we could do some artwork to actually convey the same same messages. And yeah, for like the summer concerts as well. You know, you could do like specifically instead of showing all of them, like hey, this week it's the Blackwater Band, or this week it's Christine Martinez Band, uh, Saturday. Um, so those are the type of things we can do with the, the signage there, which will be very, very, very good for those events just to get people, just you know, to get more people there. Um, and then like the berry picking, these are all very good. They're timely because obviously it's Earth Day, um, the uh, disc golf. It, yeah, I think so, right? Um, I'm not sure. The walking club. And then obviously having some kind of like even basic ads we can go back to, like uh, don't forget about our community center. Um, some of those things that we can kind of go back to when we don't have a summer concert or something, some type of event coming up in the next couple months. Um, even a, even uh, some of the some of the messages similar to what like the Chamber of Commerce would do, where we're you know hey shop local, those type of things would be you know I think beneficial for the town um, to be able to use that space effectively. We kind of went through this about local businesses trickle up, um, and a lot of people were using the, this type of advertising to to hire. Um, we didn't necessarily go into our Pro, like also our property tax that we pay to the county that will part of that will go to the the town for the signage the personal property signage so something that's not up there is the fact that our advertisers that have been with us it's been 30 years i've been in the industry 18 of which was actually in in the sales end of things I think it's, I don't know what our statistic is but it was like 80 percent of the folks that advertise out, do outdoor advertising, renew their business because it works. It helps them to grow their business. Trickle up, as Chief Howie just said. So that's really all we have, unless y'all have any additional questions. Do you have a question? Um, <clears throat> I know that we came back I mean, from the last meeting and asked you to look at smaller signs and things like that, and I do appreciate <laughs> you guys taking that. Um, I'm just curious, did you consider at all things like monument signs that would be more conducive environmentally, aesthetically? They may not be exactly what you want, but it could accomplish um, that. Uh, is that something that you looked at? Yes, sir. So I guess when you mean monument sign, you're thinking like more of like a... Um... Yeah, monument sign that's on the ground right. that could have the width or, or the size that would still allow you to do the things that you're after, still generate money for the jet port, right. but then also take into consideration some of the other factors um, around this. Definitely, yeah, and that's something we, we've kind of looked back at. I think we're trying to kind of make what makes sense to the town. You know, We want to make what makes sense to the town, so doing some type of monument, um, I think we're open to doing 
you know, what we need to do to, to make it look how you guys want it to look. So that's, uh, we kind of had looked at, you know, instead of doing, um, you know, I think we're, we're kind of looking at the uh, pole as a, as, you know, instead of a black pole, let's do like a beige pole that kind of fits with like the sand and like kind of a beach more look. Um, so that's kind of where we went back with that. Um, and then also trying to kind of shield the base as well with that landscaping. I think that's kind of where we're going with that, um, with those kind of concepts. Um, obviously, we're open to. But staying with the pole. I was reading your facial expression. You seem to grimace. Is there anything you want to add when I ask well, that question? I mean, they're, they're just, it's a cost issue. I mean, we started, I looked at, it all depends on the size of the monument you're talking about, but I mean, uh, a 10 by 10 tapered monument type sign that goes up the pole is, we looked at like thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 and you could spend more. Let me make sure I'm using the correct terminology, um, Mr. Kirkland. Um, I'm thinking of a monument sign as something that's on the ground that would be sort of anchored more than just a single pole. Am I using the right expression? You, you are, yes, sir. Um, and our ordinance right has term. a definition for a monument sign in here that I can pass off to everybody if that's helpful. Bear with me just a second while I scroll down to it here <clears> in our <throat> ordinance. I just want to make sure that their definition of monument sure. is consistent with what our definition. Yeah, my has definition been. of monument is like a you know a big either a brick or stone. You or see them at churches. Stucco. You see them at schools. You see them at those types of yeah, things versus up in the air. On, on the on the size. That's why I kind of I put together the the uh, Oak Island welcomes you because we actually mimic mimic that off of my hometown which is Cedar Point, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's like a sandblasted sign, and I love it. It's got like a, you come over the bridge in Swansboro, and it's got like a little post, and then it's got an LED light uh, that shines on it. Mm -hmm. Matt, did you want Point. to? Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, by our definition, a uh, monument sign is any sign permanently attached to the ground, not attached to any building, advertising multiple tenants, uses, buildings, parcels. Uh, the design of the monument sign is to advertise multiple offerings in the building group of buildings or developmental area. Uh, individual businesses within multi-tenant facilities are not permitted freestanding signs and have their sign located on a monument sign. So, and <clears throat> our ordinance also goes on to define pole signs, which is the you would have a mono pole or a two pole mm -hmm. sign with nothing okay. underneath. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you see those that like. Um, those foods or something like that where it's one big sign there's no poles into the ground is permanently affixed on the ground and it has multiple tenants advertised on it um, and there, there is a local community with a similar sign that i think um mr gilbert may be talking about our own community our rec center a neighboring community up on 211 has one of these signs that i that i think i had in my mind it is digital it is a monument sign, you know, does have scrolling messaging and whatnot. So I think that's kind of what right. we had in our mind as what was most desirable in this context. Well, and you I, may know, I'm sure Mr. Franklin knows the sign that I'm talking about. Absolutely, but please keep in mind whatever we do, it's gotta be worthwhile. They're, whatever they, it's all, it's numbers as well as anything else. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be worthwhile for them to do it, to bring me benefits, to bring the town benefits. That's, that's, that's going to be the bottom line issue. They spend two hundred thousand dollars on making something look good, and you get the same product that it will still with with the <coughs> greenery and the shrubbery and things of that nature. So please keep in mind, it's got to be worth their while. That they won't, they can't do it. I think just we, a, I think we just kind of actually it. priced a, uh, a a sign in another market that we're in at the request of of the uh, landowner, uh, he wanted to replace an old sign on his hotel and wanted to do like the monument type sign where you have um, his hotel name up top with, an, I think it was uh, an eight, eight by eight LED sign, full color. He didn't want just like, you know, hey, welcome to Oak Island time temp. He wanted the ability to do like pictorial copy on it. Just the digital itself was like in the fifty thousand dollar range without even the rest of the sign. I think that the bit. I think the big thing is we did look at some of these like monument type signs, and what you had was you still had a pole, um, and it was basically just trying to shield the pole. So you still have a pole to hold that structure, and that was really one of the big things why we kind of went back to the 
let's try to like shield it. Let's do the landscaping and the painting so we can kind of shield that idea because really what you were all you, all you really do with this type of structure because of the height, because we do need to have some of the height is that we basically were just hiding the pole more or less, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of where we went back to some of these other ideas to let's, let's figure out how we can kind of like make this fit the landscape a little bit better. Um, and so that was really one of our, because you still were basically taking the pole and either either building like a facade or something around it to kind of shield it or cover it, but you still had the pole, it was something still going up. Um, so and we're obviously still open to ideas on what can, you know, satisfy everybody here to get it, make it look how y'all want it to look, so. Um, I just want to point out <clears throat> or raise the point um, for the town's benefit, um, if we have a true emergency, do we want our message on a small, smaller monument sign on the ground, or do we want it on a big LED billboard? You know, it's, in my mind, it's not just about, you know, saying we have a concert Friday night at the park. <laughs> I'm just trying to weigh how much that sign, how much that, that message will be needed for, and the benefit over coming when it's not needed. It's not that I completely, look, it's one of the huge positives, guys, this is one of the huge positives is that you could do those public service announcements on behalf of Oak Island. That does not fall deaf on me at all. I'm just trying to weigh um, all of those factors. So, but thank you for your point. Reiterating that point. Any other questions? I, I I'd just like to ask a side question: How many drownings were at Oak Island last year? And then I think it was in twenty twenty two when yeah. we had right. five. And then how many of those were because of rip currents? I, th I think any time you can save just one life, then... Oh, well, yeah. I'm yeah. not trying to quantify right. it. Yeah. I just wanted to... I'm ch In my mind, I'm trying to balance. Right. I understand. <clears throat> and, but if and, you're already on a beach, you're not going to see the sign. Well, that's, you've got a good point there, too. Mm -hmm. But for the day trippers, then it would be a benefit. I think ultimately the the benefit to it is... I don't know. If, I don't. I don't think that the negative outweighs the benefit. You know, like this picture here. Just picture a thirty-five foot tall hanger right there. But I think with a copy too is is you know a lot of folks that aren't from here they don't understand rip currents. They don't know what a red flag means or a yellow flag or a green flag. That's some copy that you could put put up there to educate them on their way in. Okay, we're talking about eight seconds of a minute, and a car is going to drive by and, and can see it for an average of three seconds. Again, I, right. I don't want you guys to feel like I don't see it is the number two benefit I've got. I mean, seriously, it's enormous. I'm just, again, trying to put it in perspective. That's all. all right. and, so, and, and people and folks, who come we, here. And folks, we, if I, if I may, Mr. Franklin, our mission here as a planning board is to address the broad public interest in our community. And we understand the uniqueness of the airport district, certainly, and see the economic benefit. We, we know that the airport benefits because it is near a beach community. It is unique, just in my opinion, in that context, right? right? You may, Mr. Franklin, be involved in talking with other airport um, our airports around North Carolina, but you must admit that the beach community increases your takeoffs and landings significantly, I would imagine. So it's a, it's a very symbiotic relationship, and, and I think we all acknowledge that, certainly. But I think our mission here as a planning board is, um, I think we heard this in a training this week, that, that our job is to be keepers of the plan, and that's the land use plan here for Oak Island. And, and that actually drives us to, to some things that we have to try to help prevent, like prevent unappealing aesthetics in things like signage in our community, make sure that they blend with surroundings, soften the visual impact of what they do, and discourage, actually discourage, 
is in our land use plan, uh, reflective and internally illuminated signs. Isn't that interesting? It's actually in our land use plan. We, we have um, off-premise signs that we just revised, which limited both height and size um, for the sort of the Long Beach Road area. And so the risk that we have to mitigate here, I think as a board, is you know, considering visual pollution, things that might obstruct views, as people come onto the island, because that's a that's the, one of the entrances to our island. So those aesthetics are very important to us. We don't want anything that distracts motorists, um, and we want to make sure that again we consider the broad public interest here. I I, I just want to make that statement that I, I hopefully I speak for other board members in that regard, but. That is our challenge. We appreciate the airport. We understand the economic value, but we are driven here in our decisions based on what we are given as our plan and keepers of the plan, which is our land use plan. And I agree with that, ma'am. However, that still take consideration that the district engineer and the DOT transportation considers us a, de a, a unique district with different zoning needs. And signage was one of the big ones because uh, the, the ladies that were uh, involved in o doing Oak Island as far as uh, their golf course on, on, on that area wanted to put a, a sign up along the side of the road like the, you have now. And the district in the air immediately said, no, you can't do that. They said, well, what about the size of the airport signs? And they said, no, that's a different entity. We are... I mean, as, as you understand it, we're different, but we are really different as far as our uh, function and as far as what we do and as far as our legal ability to do things. And I don't want to fight with anybody or anything like that. You know, we fought over that bridge for 20 years. You know, what it, you know what it, how it helped us get our roads and our same beach sand? It didn't help. So uh, there's a lot of people that really look at this as a big asset and a modern. It's changing, it's new, but it's an asset. That's what the bottom line is. I think it's more of an asset than anything taken away. Can I make a comment? Looking at what they have brought to us now, they've lowered the height, they've lowered the size, they've added a monument that we did not even request that is actually a very good looking welcome to Oak Island with vegetation. It's not as intrusive as a building that could be put there. And it is beneficial. We've got billboards right down the street from where these are. A, red, a person coming into the island doesn't know whether that's Oak Island property or county property. They've just seen a billboard a quarter of a mile up the road. In fact, they've seen several. It's not going to change their perspective on the island one bit. In fact, that actually looks pretty good from what it could be. And as Howie said, the airport district is totally different and has different needs than what right down the street is, which is county and Southport. I mean, we're going to grow. Things are going to come in. If they don't put, if that's not used for that, that's going to be used for something else. Eventually, that will be used for something else. And it may not, may not be to our advantage. Well, in my opinion, <clears throat> The public safety advantage outweighs any aesthetic concern, and in, in my opinion, also uh, a I think professional, this is a huge, well done yeah. sign like this is not the problem. It's all the little clutter signs that that don't get taken care of. I, Mr. Chairman, I, just on the public safety issue, certainly support that. Any any mechanisms we have to protect public safety are critical for mm -hmm. us. And if we didn't have other mechanisms to do that, it would be different. But we do. We have other methodology to alert people on the island, and I think many people in our community have done a really good job at making sure those public safety announcements are available in various and sundry ways, right? So um, while I see the benefit of that, I don't see that as a 
main driver in my decision on this. We have any other comments? Um, looking at the picture here, uh, while I agree that the lower Oak Island sign uh, is very appealing, to me, if I was not familiar with the area and I was driving in and I saw that, I would think I need to take a right-hand turn here, that that is the entrance <laughs> to Oak Island. <laughs> or that it was a subdivision or something down that road. Um, the other piece of it is, I mean, while there are definitely benefits that we're hearing about uh, from this, the bottom line is the sign is massive. Um, and if I was trying to read the message on that sign, I think I probably would have missed the lower Oak Island sign. Um, unless I'm sitting at the stoplight, um, red light, then I might catch both of them. Um, you know, kind of echo on some of what we've already heard. I, I mean, we have a purpose as a planning board, and I think, you know, we need to be looking to the future and planning for what we want Oak Island to look like and be like and, you know, we have to include the vision that we and residents have and a massive sign here and then one just down the road is not my vision and I think the majority of the residents would say it's not their vision. Um, that's what I expect to see out on the interstate, and not at the front door of your community. But yet we have those same billboards, not just a quarter of a mile down the street. And that's what I don't want to look like. <laughs> I think they look awful. Uh, it's, it's not a pleasant uh, view coming down that road. I think it's and it's not so much the billboards as it is like Melanie said, the little signs that are a dime a dozen coming down through there. Any of the businesses have multiple mm -hmm. small signs and it just looks like clutter to me. There's clutter everywhere through there. Yeah. It's all how you look at it. David, do you have any uh, input? Yeah. I believe it's a, a heavy commercialized area. I think there's a lot of commercial growth and and renovation coming to that area. Um, the benefit to the town as far as advertising, I think is humongous. And then in everything I can think of in my mind, safety overrides or overrules everything. You can write an ordinance that states this, but when a, when a safety issue comes into effect, safety comes first. You know, building codes, everything, fire code overrules everything. Um, you know, we already have signs at beach entrances and everything for rip current. Um, you know, at the boat ramp, there's, you know, free life jackets to use daily. Grab it here, put it back when you come back. Um, so I understand that point also. But one more sign could make a difference. You know, you know, as we teach people, it's driven into their heads over and over and over. So the more you see it, the more likely you're to do it. Um, we're a family beach with a lot of kids. We've had several bad years uh, on the beach. Um, one more effort could make a difference. So, you know, I think the the height of it, you know, it follows the, the county. They're agreeing that the candle power will follow the, the county's uh, UDO 0 0.3. Um, you know, the, the seconds in between signs lining those up. That gives somebody more ability to see that um, distraction. I think a lot of people are already looking that way. They're looking at planes landing. They, they love to see that. I mean, we'll pull over in the turning lane and just stop and say, oh, there goes a CRJ 200 or a Citation or this or that. Um, do I think it'll add disruption to your visual 
you know, where you're looking. Not necessarily, because that's typically in your peripheral vision. Um, and there's not many people that just drive by it once. Today they may see the billboard, tomorrow they may see the monument. The next day they may see a helicopter taking off or, or a plane landing or somebody washing a boat in the car wash there. Uh, I, I believe Clem Seafood just closed. Uh, I could be incorrect, but I'm pretty sure it did. So you could have some redevelopment coming there. Um, I, I truly believe that, you know, we've got a plan for tomorrow that can be enacted today and that's growth and you very hard time stopping that. That's all I have to say. All right. So what is the text amendment that we will be voting on, Lisa? Are, are you going to take comments from everyone after we have a motion and a second on the floor and open it up for discussion then? You wanna, or do you want to hear from everyone? Let's hear from... Do you have any comments that you want to make? Yeah, I agree. You agree? Mm -hmm. The problem I have is we need to make sure if we vote to send this, that we have, no offense, I know this says 10 by 30 with a total height of 35. What we were given says something completely different. Right. It says, hey, we're going to put this sign down here. Well, it don't say that here. It don't say the candle wit. It don't say the amendment that, you know, that the town gets the benefit. So that would be the main thing I would want to do is make sure we get that nailed down. Because I still had the same concerns I had last time. You're picking winners and losers. Um, I deal with some of the businesses that are across the street from the airport. And when I went in for my month, when, when I went into one of them, they were like, oh, airport's making another money grab. Why can't we do that? You know, so, you know, that's all I got to say. Um, <clears throat> I've gone back and forth on this. And I can come to one conclusion. If it wasn't you making this request of us, I would not be considering this request at all, Mr. Franklin. I think you've been a tremendous steward of, of the airport and of Oak Island as a whole. And I, if I'm 100% honest, I'm only considering this because it is something that you're behind. That's my number one uh, reason why I would do this. Uh, I do think the emergency and the Oak Island public service announcements are a huge win. And whether this motion votes down or not, I think there is an opportunity for signage that is appropriate that could serve that purpose for our town. And I would implore us and our town council to look at those types of things. I also do appreciate the ad of the Oak Island sign. I'd like to think that Oak Island could design it. I'd like to think that we could, you know, have that. Um, the benefits to the airport and the revenue generation, you know, I get that. I really do. Um, the benefits to small businesses, I get that. Um, I appreciate that it follows the county sign standards as well. I do want to say that each individual, we don't consider that to be our, you know, our standard. I think that's the baseline standard and then it behooves the towns individually to then adjust those standards as they meet the, um, the characteristics of that town. Um, having said all of that, I do agree with Ms. McCullough. I went back to the comprehensive plan, land use plan, which is and should always be our guiding document for things like this. And this actually sort of flies in the face of that. So that's a struggle that I'm really trying, because that was, there are citizen input into that, that that was adopted by our town. I recognize that it's a little outdated. However, it is still our comprehensive land use plan. And that's why I ask about the monument signs, because that's a different discussion, to be really candid with you. Um, just last month, this body voted unanimously to adopt a an overlay district on the other street. So if there are two front doors into our island, 
one being the west entrance, this one being the east. We just literally, negate, we just stopped this type of thing on that other corridor because we didn't want to open that door to that type of thing. So now I'm sitting here balancing what we did there and now we're gonna go in the opposite direction on probably the more heavily trafficked corridor or front door into our, um, our island. Um, I do have um, difficulty in approving this for the island, if, I mean for the airport district, if we're not gonna open it up to everyone. So I get the argument, it's just one more sign. But actually that's not right. We should not be approving an ordinance for a single you know, party. I think that's actually against the code of ethics for these types of things. We should be allowing it for everyone. And so now we introduce others who may build competitive signs. Maybe they're not as nice, but they're still as effective. Um, so we've got to balance that as well there. Um, I do think there's a distraction to drivers from a sign that changes every eight seconds, if we really want to think about it, because uh, this is not like 211, where you're on a stretch and you're not turning. You're not looking to make a turn. You're on a straight and narrow. Here we're on a heavily trafficked road that has a lot of ingress and egress from all of those buildings that come up and down. Um, and granted, they, they, they ease a little bit at this point, but to your point that you can see it from a distance, I do think there's a visual distraction um, that does put um, lives at risk. And I do think it, it's already hard enough to turn left against traffic or turn right, depending on how you're coming and going. I mean, now you give them something else that's changing every eight seconds. It's not the eight seconds I'm worried about. It's the four seconds and then it changes and then it's the next four where they're trying to consume the next message. In the, in the, so again, there's that. It is the front door to our island. Again, if it wasn't for you, Mr. Franklin, there's no way I'd be considering this. Um, and then last, I really do feel without having fleshed out what a monument sign or types of monument signs, what they could contribute, because I do think there is far more consistency with the monument sign than there is with the pole sign. I just don't know that we've fleshed this one out enough. Um, and so th I know that's a lot, um, but I've really tried to, you know, and I want to say again, in all respect to you, in all deference to you, I have thought about this so much, Mr. Franklin, and I just don't see how our responsibility of making sure it's in compliance with what our citizens want, I just can't say we're there yet, yet. And I hope that this doesn't end the discussion for you. And on that same note, Mr. Gilbert, um, certainly the airport is a critical part of our community and the commerce here Absolutely. in our community, no doubt. Um, and I think that there is a solution, Mr. Franklin, to the applicant, you as the applicant, to find a way to do this advertising. I believe there is a way. I personally don't believe that a lighted pole sign is that solution, but I would encourage that different solutions be evaluated so that, that you can bring that forward to the community. Mark? Uh, I mean, I kind of... Everything I would say, I think, has already been said, but definitely would echo that, you know, I, I'm not against this sign and the ability to benefit from some of the messaging that we've talked about for safety reasons, but I just think this is not a fit for here. It is too massive and needs to be, um, something else needs to be brought forward for me to support it. David? I think I've spoke my piece, but I would like to add that under the comprehensive land use plan, it states um, signage is a necessary component of the built environment. But when regulations without regard for design can lead to an unparalleling, unparalleling um, large freestanding signs throughout Oak Island disrupt the landscape and are in obvious conflict with the surrounding natural resources. Signs shouldn't be constructed to blend with their signs should be constructed to blend with their surroundings, which they're doing, yeah. um, and should be in proportionate to the structure for which they are supporting. I would have, I would have to say that this is proportionate to a something hundred x hundreds of acres of airport. So. I don't see this going against the comprehensive land use plan. It clearly states it should be this, 
it should be that. They've clearly done that. Um, and then as far as other needs, well, this language will actually be for the airport district slash CLD. Well, the CLD districts are very small around Oak Island until you get around Middleton 211. And clearly... Um, wait, you mean Long Beach Road and 211? No, no. And the, you know, the only CLD districts that we have currently are, are right there. Got and okay. then 211, Middleton, Got it. I'm sorry, Midway. I misunderstood. Thank you. And clearly, there's going, to need, there's going to be a large need for signage over there also with all the added text that we have added for CLD. We are driving everything to that area. So you're looking at two areas for this type of signs, the airport district and CLD. If you can't advertise there, where do you want the advertising to be? I think this is more or less something that we've missed that we should be looking into regardless. I mean, it's not against the land use plan. The land use plan clearly states should be constructed to blend with their surroundings. They've done that and offered more. And then when you know, safety overrules everything, Everything. There's nothing that gets put in front of safety. That's that's my my side of it. Uh, but you know, if it was to be approved, there there's obviously a distance spacing in between. And and I don't look at this. No disrespect. I don't, I don't look at this as a Mr. Franklin project. I look at this as a town project. When I was reading through the minutes, I saw some questions about financials. I was like, well, that, that has nothing to do with us whatsoever. But we need advertising for local businesses. We clearly need safety bulletins if possible, especially if the town can get it for free of use, I guess you would say. Um, and people have to have somewhere to advertise. I don't, I don't think, I don't see this as we're approving this because of this applicant. I see that we're approving this because of a need for safety, a need for advertising, and something that was missed in a district of a regulation of use. And I, I see it being in line with the comprehensive land use plan. As long as they're making it blend, you know, and you know, it's actually almost like a a rule needs to be written around this this you know this district. The signs have to be X amount apart. X size, X size, X height, X lumens or candle lit power. Um, and there's a benefit to the Allen that's huge that's being offered right now. May not always be offered. Can I say? If I ask a question? Go ahead, Mr. Ha Mr. Franklin. Uh, I thank you for considering uh, my value in this and things of that nature. I appreciate that very much. Um, but this came, this is from my board. Mm -hmm. My board consists of two people that are appointed by the town of Oak Island. One person is appointed by the town of Southport. Four is appointed by the, the, the county. And each one of those individuals in the county are under an individual county commissioner. This board thought it would be good for the area, good for the county, and according to our, what we're supposed to do for the state and for the county, it follows those rules. And we are different than you. Not only that, I, I don't want to, legally we can do it. And that presents a problem to me because I'm a, I'm a member of this town and live on Oak Island. That, please weigh this in the big picture. You know what that is? It's a lower left-hand corner of the big picture. That's what most people see. You have to look at our future what we got, and my board, I'm a representative of those members, and they're all quality business people. And uh, they, they, they want this to happen with the community. And there's a lot of people all over this state that agree with that. So you're threatening legal action? No. Uh, no, no. Not at all. No. no. But you have to understand that we are a district in itself. 
a district that operates under the guidelines of the city of Oak Island. Of the guidelines of FAA and the Department of Transportation Aviation. Under the guidelines right. of Oak Island. It, Gene, I think what he's trying to say is they are an entity unto their self, which is inside the city. Um, can I ask a question though? And I was gonna ask it of you, Mr. Purser. Yes, sir. Part of what I feel like, and again, maybe, uh, tell me your name again, sir. I'm, I'm Gray, Vic. Or, Gray, Gray, Vic. Vic, Mr. Vic. It, it seemed as though a conversation about monument signs, while that might be not be meaningful to you, while it might not ultimately be an alternative that you want to pursue, it seemed as though that is an option that we've not had a chance to discuss. And so I don't disagree, Mr. Purser, with the points that you've raised. And, and I think, again, there is a place where this can function. I don't, under, I don't know the ROI. I'm a former investment banker, so I'll be glad to sit down with somebody and make sure there's a positive ROI. I don't need to look at your numbers. Just make it, And I get that you're in business, and that's what you need to do. And I, and I do get all that. We can't take that into consideration in our judgment, you understand, or in our decisions. But I would love to have him come back with anything that is a possible solution so that when we're voting on this, we're not voting on last month it was a certain height, you know, now we've lowered the height a little bit. I, I would really prefer you to put those other options on the table and let's see, because I do think regardless of what we've all said today, we want to see this happen for you in a way that's conducive with what we believe our citizens want, what believe we believe. And I could continue reading the comprehensive land use plan and say yeah. that it, it, there's more language that I would add that says it isn't in, you know, it is in conflict. So that's my only thing. And I don't want you to feel like you've got to come back a whole nother month. I really don't. I understand how belaboring this is, but I just feel like we would be voting on partial options when maybe a better option is not even being talked about today. And that's why. Uh, would you be amenable? I, I, I hesitate in asking. It sounds disingenuous because I know that's what you came back today to do. But is that something, Mr. Purser, that you would consider looking at other options to see if they fit I mean, what I'm would be a broad here. construed yeah. um, idea of in you know, uh, environmentally suited and all of those types of things that are in the use of plan? Here's the thing, and I understand where they're coming from. A smaller sign the revenue generated off of that size sign compared to the cost to build it. That's not for us to determine, though, I mean, as a planning no. board, what the okay. revenue opportunity is of that. So I understand. I'm but, but, but I do think we, we owe it to ourselves, to it, the town council, and to the citizens to just make sure we've helped them look at as many options that make sense for them. Now, if you came back and said, monument sign doesn't make sense. We're never going to be coming to you with the monument sign option. Now we know what we're voting on. Now we know what the only option is on the table. That's what we're going to vote on. But if there are other options, I think it behooves us to hear those options and consider those alongside what's being presented today. Some knowledge that it would cost more. I guess I don't really necessarily know exactly what you're looking for. You know, I mean, a monument sign and trying to figure out how, it's, um, uh, like a monument sign, you mean like a lower sign, I guess. I guess Mr. I'm Kirkland, is that something that you could help them sort of looking at what is already drafted, figure out whether it makes sense. And again, I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm just saying right. if it is an option, let's not leave it off the table um, so that we can evaluate everything. So what is your and, and if I may, and if I might add, maybe, sign. maybe no offense to these fine gentlemen, but maybe Mr. Franklin should look at other potential vendors to provide something that looks more like a digital solution uh, in a monument type format. Again, no offense to you guys, because I know you've done a lot of work. I All right. Uh, what is Tom. the vision for a monument sign? How big? I mean, that's. I mean, the bottom line is: is, the, is are you envisioning a smaller type sign or a the, large monument sign? Or? The description of it is in the is in our. It's in the plan use. Right. Or land right. use. Right. And I respect yes. that's not your right. business model. I do respect that. You, yes. Melanie wants to. Um. I also have wrestled with uh, back and forth with the idea because we have concluded that we don't want off-premise signs. And uh, I can tell you the only reason I would vote for it is 
the public safety aspect. And I can also tell you, I would not support a monument sign because it has less impact. If the only motivation for me to vote for it is public safety, I want big public safety. Okay. I, I would not be in favor of a monument sign. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to get this cut short. David, one more. I, I have a question to Matt. Uh, <laughs> Matt, does the FAA or the Board of Transportation overrule the town of Oak Island? Uh, anything that they come to us with has to meet our zoning requirements. Yeah. But that's an answer, no yeah. answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to determine. Is it? I can't speak to the FAA or the, the any Department of Transportation policy or anything like that, but development that comes into the town needs to meet the zoning requirements of the town of Oak Island and the district that it's in. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to call for a vote. Okay. Point of order. Point of order. You don't have a motion. What? There's not a motion to vote on yet. There's not a motion <coughs> to vote well, yet. Then we need, uh, I'll be happy to make well, a motion. Okay. I'll I, second. Oh, sorry. What are we voting on? <laughs> As we sit today and what we have before us, um, I'd like to make a motion that we recommend denial to our town council um, and that we find that the proposed amendment is not consistent with the adopted plan of the town, the land use plan. I'm going to second. Okay. All right, we have a first and second. All in favor? Three. All opposed? There you go. Goes down. There you go. Okay, but we oh, do not have now. a motion on anything yeah. else. You guys need to make a recommendation. I need to make another. a recommendation. Where's the recommendation we need to well, make? So what your options are uh, <clears throat> recommend denial to town council, which you just had a motion that failed to do that. Um, you can recommend approval, uh, finding that the proposed ordinances are consistent with the adopted land use plan, uh, or that they're not consistent, but recommend uh, amending the land use plan in a way that makes them consistent. Uh, you could recommend, uh, you don't have to recommend exactly what the applicant brought. You can make your own recommendation uh, for what these signs need to look like, height, size, et cetera. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you have already continued this item once. Um, and once you, you have 30 days to make a recommendation on the text amendment. We're, so you're at that 30 days now. Today. If you were to continue it further, the applicant has the option in then to take it straight to the town council without any feedback or report from the planning board. Um, so basically where you're at now is you a couple of different ways to recommend approval. Um, I think I'd like to make a motion to approve that it is consistent with the land use plan or the, or the part that I'm currently have in front of me and reading that they have or the, the applicant has made this blend in. They have toned down the size. Um, the 10 pardon? by 30 with the 35 foot. Say that again, Ms. Morgan. What was she, what, I, I couldn't hear him. Sorry. The 10 by 30 with the 35 oh, foot. Okay. Thank you. But I think that we need to add in there a spacing requirement also. And this is what will protect the town from having them every 10 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, spacing of how far? Yeah. 3,500 feet? That's what More, time. <laughs> um, more time, which we don't have. So currently, if, if something is not approved, then the only notion that the council will have is that it was that it did not pass not pass well the um, council can add that in right and they yeah. vote on it okay they can that's, make that's fine i'd like to make a motion to approve it and that it is in line with the comprehensive land use plan uh max height 35 feet max size of uh, what is currently the 10 by 30 and then i would like to see a linear length in between signs added in at town council at town can we council. do that lisa 
Yes, sir. Okay. Hold on. Can I add to his? He's amenable to it. Mm -hmm. Are you amenable to me adding to yours? Clearly. I want to um, add that they've got to add the sign below the sign right there at Clem's. Correct. Um, that it abides by the candle power lights that's set by Brunson County. And you, uh, what? We wouldn't be able to extract oh. a second sign being a requirement as uh, a okay. part of this. That's sign. something, uh, that's that's something that's that they can offer up, but we couldn't write that into the ordinance. Okay. Sir. So take that part out. But I, I can add the candle power, right? The candle power is fine. Okay. And can we add an. What about the candle power? I'm sorry. Can you restate that part about that? Sure. Yeah, the, the, what's the candle power required by Brunswick County? 0 0.3. Um, you, you could just say to match the candle power standards of the county, and yeah, we can pull go. those and put them in. 0 0.3 foot candles. And can we add an addendum that the city, that the city always has? Well, we can't do that either. No, we that's, can't do that. you're regulating the content of the sign at that point. Okay. So, no, sir. You good, Gene? I'm good. Uh, question, though. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I guess we need to second that, we, and then we'll have discussion. We need to second that motion. Okay. Can Mr. Presser state on the record? Are you um, okay with those amendments to the motion? I am. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Can, can we have discussion now on what, on that? Because I, I just, so it's been always my experience, the motion, then second, and then you open it up for discussion. That may not be okay. the way we do, so please, I'll adjust to whatever right. your preference discussion is on door. this. Um, so in section 10.26.6, .6, there's a 40-foot height require um, in here. I'm looking at the, the proposed language. Oh, is this the, so, okay. The proposed language right now, it's 25 is the height in the CLD. Is that right, um, Matt? The or Mr. current Kirkland, requirement sorry. in the CLD is? 25, so 25. this one's 35. That's what they've requested, yes, sir. It went to 15, that's right. There's a five-foot setback from the right-of-way. This one, obviously, is more 3,500 3, radial square foot. And then 15-second interval is... I believe in the current ordinance, this one's going to eight. So I just want to make sure, I, I get that we may want to adopt it, and I'm fine. I mean, this board, I will now support the, board, the board's decision here. I just don't know how we can truly say it's in, consistent with the comprehensive land use plan. I'm not saying that that's a negative or what, ha I'm just saying I think if we're going to approve it, approve it, let's stand up and say we approved yeah. it as a board. Um, but I can't see how we can say it's it's consistent with the comprehensive plan use plan. That's my only point. Go ahead. Okay. Any other discussion? I, I will I will say I'm not sure how we can say it's consistent with the adopted plans of the town when clearly we're making an exception that it's not. So I'm not sure. I, I won't be able to support the motion for that reason. Yeah. It's not consistent, but we're making an exception. All in favor? One, two, three, four. All opposed? It passes. And I wanted to go on record. I just was I was only voting against that co consistent with the conference. That was the only piece I was voting uh, against there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yep. We, we no, no, no. Our... And I appreciate your all of your arguments. Thank you, sir. Yep. All right. Can I call for a five-minute break? Yes, please. Here. Welcome back. We are back in session. Next agenda item is the UDO definitions and table of uses. We have reviewed this. Matt has a clean copy, and would you like to take it from here? Sure. Um, I'm just real quick. I won't belabor it too much. Um, so over the past several months, uh, the board's been reviewing and considering potential changes to some of the uh, ordinance you ordinances you have in front of them. Um, we did our best to uh, try to compile everything and, and draft an ordinance um, that 
I said, tried to reflect all those uh, discussions. Um, but one, <clears throat> similar to the last uh, item, that this board makes its own recommendations. So if there's anything we missed or needs to be tweaked or anything like that, definitely uh, you can do that as a part of your recommendation one way or another. Um, we've got a, <clears throat> a consistency statement in here drafted and ready to go should you want to go ahead and make a recommendation this month. Um, with that, I'd, I'd open it up to the, the chair for however he wants to organize this discussion going forward and whatever action the board wants to take. Okay. Oh. On the consistency statement, mm -hmm. the chair is incorrect. Oh, sorry. I, I, I was. I read through. The, you pre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can definitely. Uh, we'll fix that before we get you to sign it, Mr. Chair. Yeah. <laughs> Brady. That's a cut and paste issue. <laughs> Mark, would you like to start? Um, what I'm going to do, uh, board, I'm going to go each person. You should have what notes that you see that may be different than what we discussed previous. Any issues you have, comments, concerns, you'll bring all of those up at one time and then we'll take a vote at the end after discussion and tweets. Question? Sorry. So all so pages one through 12, we're taking all of those in one, like he's gonna go through his issues on one through, cause this is all redlined. So this is all add, right, Matt? Yeah, anything that's underlined is. So everything on tape one through 12, all of this is new language. So I'm trying to understand. Uses that's the problem I had okay, last night. <laughs> table of uses goes straight to the red line. Okay. I didn't go at it that way. Um, Are you okay? Yep, yep, I'll get there. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Are we to be commenting on the definition part two or? Mm -hmm. yes. I, I, okay, all right, just so I know how far to go. Yes. So on page 21, 7.2.4, uh, basically says no parcel may contain more than two accessory buildings unless blah, blah, blah. But 7.2.6 says no parcel may contain more than two accessory buildings. That was my read as well. Contact. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I think 7.2. 2.4 gives an exception. Um, but couldn't you combine those into <coughs> one point? Well, you could just delete the 2.6. Yes, right. yeah. that's, that's right. What, that's what I think. So. Just delete that, 2.6. And then... Um, oh, and <coughs> for, for clarity's sake, anything that any one of y'all brings up that you want to change... In case you want to go ahead and make a recommendation at this meeting, it'd be good to go ahead and vote on each okay. individual change as you go forward. Just so, okay. like, if your recommendation is to remove 7.2.6, let's let's talk let's about it and, and actually and vote on that so that each change is, is documented is appropriately. Done. All right. I will make a motion that we delete 7.2.6 as being repetitive. Second. All in favor? Aye. Approved. Um, next, um, on page 26, I'm going to use it as an example, um, Manufacturing Light um, has the 7.62.2, which speaks of the lighting for dark sky. And if you go through these pages, there's multiple that have it, but they're multiple that don't. And my, I think a lot of this was prior to my time, but I'm questioning why they don't all have it. Um, if that's, I mean, why don't it schools should. have it or fire stations have it or um, libraries? Um, to me, all of those categories should have that same lighting. Yeah, can we think of an example of one that wouldn't, for example, for, as a way to <coughs> so test your... And I'll just touch on that briefly. Um, our, our current ordinance has lighting standards. It has standards for cutoff lighting, which is essentially um, how you shield a light. Um, dark sky lighting is, a, is an exception above that, essentially, that not only says it needs to be cut off, but that it basically has uh, additional standards. So 
Um, <clears throat> what was attempted to be done here was to identify some, some uses that may have oh, additional lighting uh, uh, implications for them. So like a large uh, industrial site might have more lighting than something that's a, a smaller scale like a library or something like that. So you might want a higher standard there. But that's not to say we don't have lighting standards that are, that are across the board for all development here in the town. Now if you want to amend those one way or another, we can definitely uh, make that part of your recommendation. So is that some clarity on that? That's a clarity. Is does that answer your question? Uh, personally, I mean it uh, helps clarify. But personally, I think there would be other categories that potentially would want that. I believe. Um, that's my opinion. <coughs> I don't know how they what the others feel. So well, the difference is it's a higher standard than what we normally have for all building codes. That's right, yes, sir. Um, so we tried, and the, the point in having them in some and not in others was just, we tried to identify as we were going through things that might have additional lighting implications that might need that higher standard. Mm -hmm. um, I would say if it's something um, that the boards wants to take up you know, to uh, maybe expand or implement for all development or something like that, um, you could you could have kind of a couple of options there. You could um, you could try to add those here in this meeting. You know, you could uh, <clears throat> continue with what's drafted and then uh, say, "Hey, Matt, we want to take up lighting standards going forward," and that could be a whole separate discussion for yeah. where how we need to implement additional lighting standards town wide. Um, if we're going to do that, I would, well, no, uh, that, that's really kind of the, the two ways you can do it here. It can go as is today. And, and if, if and we want to come back and talk about more Absolutely. detailed lighting standards, we can come back at a later time, like we're going to do with the fill yeah. or yeah. <clears throat> other parts of it. That kind of gets into our what are our performance standards, which are those standards that apply to uh, pretty much all development in the town. So like parking, lighting, signage requirements, those are broad categories that apply to, to everything uh, here in the town. So if there's something that we think maybe would be a good idea in these supplemental regulations to apply town-wide, um, we can definitely bring that discussion back to it um, going forward. But yeah. it's at the pleasure of the board, certainly. Do you need that motion, Mr. Chairman? Uh, to to sort of hold this for a later action to take up lighting standards. Do we actually separately? need a motion for that, or, or do we just we no. just we'll it, put that on the agenda? Yeah. Okay. Right. That can be put on the agenda for a later meeting. Yeah. If there's anything you guys want to continue discussion, okay, going forward, you can just note that and we'll bring it back to you. Yeah. Um, and then. Um, under the table of uses, um, again, a lot of this was uh, done uh, prior to me <coughs> coming on the board. But what I tried to do was take those um, asterisks and look for definitions. And there were a couple, I think, that I didn't um, see a definition for. Let's see if I can find. Uh, mixed uses, I think, was one of them I didn't see, unless I missed it. Uh, definition for. Hang on, because it might be in a different place. Throw it in just a second. <clears throat> That's, uh, um, I apologize. The, the definition for that's uh, in the wrong place in your ordinance. It's on page 50. And the reason it's in the wrong place was that was previously identified as condominium mixed use. Yeah. So what happened was when I struck out the condo, it didn't get put into M where it needs to be. So we can slide that down into M uh, if necessary. Okay. Yep. I see it. Yeah. Do we need to vote on that, or just mm -hmm. that's just a clerical? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's a clerical I promise you. <laughs> Different page. <Yeah. laughs> uh, thank you for pointing that out, though. And then um, uh, 
just a typo on page 50. Commercial recreation facility, just spelling of outdoor. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. I was going to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> and then on page 60, um, I think is where it should be. I didn't see the definition for laundromat. Laundry mat. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Put one in there, but I might not have. I thought it wasn't at one point. Unless it got stuck somewhere else. No. Nah, um, we can definitely compile one. What, so, and for common words like that, like laundromat or something like that, if this, this is kind of an ordinance construction thing, but um, <clears throat> if there's a common term in the ordinance that's not defined, we pull Webster's dictionary, which is the standard kind of dictionary for anything. So we just pull that, um, even if there's not a term in the ordinance. Okay. But if you'd like to amend it so that we'll put that into the ordinance, I can definitely. Well, would that uh, one need a commercial and a non-commercial um, definition? What's a, what's a non-commercial laundromat? Huh? That'd be strictly commercial. Okay, so so like, okay, I think of a commercial as a laundromat being used specifically for businesses like the laundromat, the, you know, but it could be one where I go in and put four quarters in and do yeah. my own. That's commercial as well. Okay, got it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. So Y'all can tell it's been definition? years since I've had to do that. Go ahead. Are we yes. adding that definition? Yeah. If you guys want to. We need to. I think that you're, need you're, to, you're questioning whether we need to is your question, you right, don't, Matt? You don't have to because, like I said, that's a commonly defined term that right. I can pull okay. out. But if you want it to be in there, just to be in there, we can we can accommodate okay that, with that to council. You okay with that, or you want to add it? No, that we're that's good. The consensus of the board. Okay, I, I'm okay with that. And then the uh, final thing I had was on page 80 under UDO administrator, um, where it says city manager. I just think it should say town manager. Yeah, fix that. Can you mention that page number again? I'm sorry. Page 80. 80. Thank you. that dang city manager to town manager thing again. You good, David? Can I be yes. brought back to I'm sorry. It's not fair. Yeah. All right, there's a lot. Um, Starting on page 21, um, okay, what, it's all kind of uh, related here. Let me get to my dog-eared pages. This one. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm not sure, um, Carrie, what your accessory structure <laughs> concerns were going to be, but... Um, so we're, we've stricken accessory structures freestanding. So are they not permitted? It, no, so <clears throat> if it's not in here, it's permitted. No, that's okay. basically so how that works. So if it's that, not in works. here, it's permitted. And <clears throat> really what you want to regulate are permanently affixed things to the ground. So like something we run into a lot is like a, a basketball goal even a temporary basketball goal, you know, that that's something that's got wheels. It's not something that's permanently in the ground. And most of those freestanding accessory things, the ones we do want to regulate, like fences, you know, et cetera, have a separate regulation. So that that freestanding accessory thing was really kind of, was a little bit confusing because it did contain things like fences, trellises, stuff like that, that we regulate somewhere else. Um, was kind of the reason for, for striking that. Um, and then I just had a question. Um, somebody recently told me that um, the town had told them a trampoline was considered an accessory structure because you pin it down. Oh, I, I don't think that would be the case. I, I, that's what I, thought. Uh, I mean, I've got flower pots that are heavier. Talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, uh, okay. We'll take well, care of that. that. That was my thinking. And then... Um, with regards to there only being two accessory buildings unless the property is greater than three quarters of an acre. Um, I, I had a, a woman speak to me about she has a double lot 
and she has two accessory structures and she wanted to add a third. So I didn't know if anybody had any input as far as, you know, Carrie, you have a double lot. I mean, do you feel like if you needed a, a third structure, if you, if you had a pool and a shed and you, you wanted a gazebo? I mean, the only thing I can think of would be, as I brought up before, I think, and probably this is one of our future items, is we talk about accessory dwelling units. That's where I think we should, from the future, be thinking about those mm -hmm. kind of things, right? I mean, because I think just the future is we need, you know, affordable housing, as we've talked mm -hmm. about, Melanie, and we need people need elder care facilities for that's teenagers true. and kids that may come home to live. So I think that's probably something that, if I were considering it on my property, it would be something that would support an additional dwelling type structure mm -hmm. to answer your question, Ms. Morgan. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, go ahead. You guys want me to chime in on this one? Um, this is so, certainly something we run into uh, as town staff, uh, and it most commonly is related to like a swimming pool, right? So somebody has a shed and maybe a detached garage, and they want to put a swimming pool in, but you've already got two accessory structures, mm -hmm. so you got to decide which two do I want, you know, <laughs> do I want to take the storage shed out to put in a pool or, you know, how, how do I want to approach that? Um, this is as it is right now, so we didn't recommend any changes to that as is, but it's certainly um, a discussion we can have because, like I said, it's, it's something we run into a lot um, and it usually re revolves around a pool. You know, fun fact about a pool is it doesn't count towards your impervious surface requirements. It's right. not a stormwater, and it's not even sticking up out of the ground. So I can certainly get people's, you know, yep. viewpoint from a logical standpoint of why is this an accessory structure when it's not impervious, it doesn't actually stick out of the ground. Um, but that's definitely, um, like I said, this is as it is right now. So uh, we didn't propose any changes to that at this time because that's a little bit of a, that's kind of a big discussion, you know what I mean, as far as how we want to, because there's a, a bunch of different open ways you could that, open that up if you wanted you to. you open that up, it's going to be. So can we chime in on that one, or do you want us to wait to if we have I, similar I'm comments on accessory? With, uh, just discussing that at a later date, putting mm -hmm. that on our list along yeah. with lighting. And I, you may have someone come in with that request at some point in the future, I guess. we, Like I said, we've had a lot I, of folks believe, come in about I it. I believe so. she has. <laughs> and, uh, can I just make a suggestion for ease of clarification? In this one, we said 7.2.1, accessory building structures. But in some of them, we talk about a building. and some of them, we talk about a structure as though they're two different things. So I would just say, if they're accessory structures, which shall include buildings, and then just stay with structures. But also, maybe you could put somewhere in a... A, a parenthetic, what are the examples, like a pool, just list those things as examples so that we define structure to be including those things that we want to include. I just, I kept going back on this one, building structure, and then I'm like, okay, are we talking about two different things? No, so, and anyway, just a, an idea for you to make it a little bit easier to read or understand. Yeah, our, our ordinance, when you look up building, the definition of building, it says C structure. So that's why they're used interchangeably there. It's just because they reference each other in the definition. So. Yeah. But yeah, that, good point. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just saying in 7.2.1, let's just use building or structure. If we've defined them as being the same somewhere else, just use one or the other, not go back and forth. Because when you're reading this, yeah. Um, and then um, I think, Matt, I had emailed this to you um, on um, the first page of the uh, table of uses. Retaining walls, uh, we, we struck fences. And then the section reference there, 7.8, is it only pertains to fences? Am I... Bear with me just a oh, second here. here. So we, what happened, uh, if you go back to the, the code of ordinances, 7.8 became retaining walls, if you go back to the supplemental regulation. Okay. So that's right. Okay. And then uh, we that's put the, I was wondering, but. we put fences went down to walls uh, and the, those standards for fences and walls were just put into one supplemental regulation. Here's the ones for walls, here's the ones for fences. Once again, didn't change any of the content of any of that. It's okay. just a little reorganization there. Um, and then uh, walls and fences. Mm -hmm. 
The trash can corrals, that would be considered a fence. Yes. Is that correct? Uh, I'd have to look in, because the, the ordinance for the trash can corrals is actually in a different ordinance than the UDO, so I'd have to look and see what that reference is. That's in the solid waste section of the ordinance, which is not in okay. the, the requirement for that. I'd have to go and look at what references are in there to okay. answer that question for sure. <clears throat> well, then I just had one more thing, which is um, on page 23, um, 7.8. Point three, uh, and I know we had had some discussion about talking about fills and retaining walls at a later date, but <clears throat> um, I would be happy to just change one word and let it ride. Uh, the amount of fill added to a lot will be no greater than one foot above the crown of the road or even with the highest adjacent lot, whichever is, <coughs> I would strike less and say greater because I don't think anybody should be forced to be below the crown of the road. I'm not looking to put anybody up in the sky <laughs> and I'm happy that if you want to do that, you, you better come with a, a good reason why, but. <clears throat> How far can that go back? Like I'm thinking beachfront lots that are sloped down towards the beach from the road. Um, and then on Pelican, as far as I know, Camel will let you go. <laughs> but that was a Camel permit issue. Yeah, it's a camel. But Dolphin Pelican are those the same Camel? Are you going to get it there? Uh, you, camel is involved any time the, there's navigable water there, but um, you know there there are places where, like, I have a second row lot, and I chose. You know, my lot slopes down. We have a, a tiered mm -hmm. uh, couple of stone walls back there. Um, we just wanted it to be as natural as possible. Um, on beautiful. either side of me, I have a higher, there's a higher retaining wall. So you, it would appear we're down in the hole, but that was the choice we made and we're happy with it. And we, they have retaining walls so that, you know, contains their dirt and their runoff and their storm water. So I, I can't, I haven't been able to get anybody to give me a good reason uh, for it. Okay. Um, I just, I just see a, a lot of evidence that we need to get all of our development up out of the flood waters. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we should be forcing anybody. Are you talking the building envelope or are you talking the property as a the whole? The building envelope. Okay. Uh, the, so well, no, the property as a whole. Your, your property, which in that case, of course, there's a point where, cam where you can't go past it. But well, wasn't the issue here that the reason the whichever is less is because in your scenario, Ms. Morgan, that you referenced, if you filled up to the retaining walls of neighbors, you could theoretically create a lot of runoff onto the street, right? Because you could theoretically be higher than the crown of the road. Would that be a true statement? Maybe Mr. Purser could help with that too. If I'm thinking about it, so Oops. like if her retaining walls are high, if her neighbor's retaining walls are higher and, Mel, and Ms. Morgan's suggestion is to change to whichever is greater, she could theoretically fill that lot up to the neighbor's retaining wall and ha create a lot of runoff down to the street is, is where my mind is with changing it from less to greater because you can't I, I was thinking that what we were trying to get at is not to create a lot of runoff not only onto neighboring properties but also onto the streetway was that was that would that be a correct for stormwater uh yeah <clears throat> so to Ms. Morgan's point at one point it, it did say greater mm -hmm. that that was the standard for yeah. some time um it changed before I got here it's all it's been less since I've, I've been uh with the town um, but I, I would assume that, you know, some of the considerations they were looking at was stormwater, you know, impact on adjacent properties, et cetera. We could certainly go back and look at the minutes from when those changes yeah. were made at some point and kind of come back with whatever discussion had been had. Um, well, well, but yeah, it was, to, to our point, point it was that greater. right now is point. that we're required to contain our stormwater. We didn't used to be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and... 
the amount of fill added to a lot will be no greater than one foot above the crown of the road or even with the highest adjacent lot. So whichever is greater actually gives more protection to the land owner. Because if it's just adjacent with the adjoining lot, mm -hmm. if they didn't build above the crown of the road, you're stopped right there and now you're trapped into a depression. Yeah, you're uh, going to get runoff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, the the mm. one of the number one flooding factors is roadways will clearly flood property owners when their property is beneath the crown of the road. Oh. So, I, so I actually agree with uh, say that one more time. Say that the, yeah, well, the flooding. Say, say that one more time. You know, if you you know, anytime you ride down the road and you see a house and they're in this area, if they're beneath the crown of the road, it's going to flood. That's yeah, true. I thought you were talking about the road flooding. No, that's oh, where I was, okay. Got no. it. I'm with you. Yeah, the, way it, the way the way it, the way it reads now is going to force the property owner to be below the crown right. of the right, road. Right, right, right. Yeah, we, we don't want to do that. Every time. No, it's not saying that. It's saying or the highest adjacent lot. No. One foot above the crown of the road is the minimum, right? No, it, it no. says whichever's no. less. But I would like and it whichever's to be. Less. <laughs> so, I, so I just would be state happy your, with the one foot above the crown of road being the minimum that the town. Which would be greater. Okay. Or greater. Yeah. Okay. Because just imagine you live here and, and your neighbor is here. Mm -hmm. His land is at this height, but the crown of the road is here. Mm -hmm. Now you're being forced to maintain whichever one is less, so you have to go to here. Then the crown of the road is above you. So now everything floods towards you. Yes. Could I, could I recommend that this sounds like a pretty complicated issue? Totally understand, but maybe this is one of the ones we hold out to continue discussions on Phil. Not maybe not change it here, Ms. Morgan, but certainly hold it out that we that maybe we should consider a change. Is that fair? I think the I'd, I'd like to hear more about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to learn I, more. I'd like to think about it a little bit. I think the greater now would be a simple change because. I mean, it's, it's literally, you know, property owner, street, and you. So, I mean, you're, you're getting to do something better now, but I still think that we need to revisit it and really work on that definition mm -hmm. or ordinance. Um, but this will give some relief to people now because there's several that's in this situation yeah. right now. Yeah. I agree. I think we should. Uh, that's just vote a, one on word change. Greater yeah. now, and if and we now. want to come back and discuss it further, we can. I, I think there's a reason. If the town town changed it from greater to less, there was a reason for that, <laughs> and I'd like to know more about why that was. And I'm sure it's related. I to stormwater. begged for an explanation. I totally on that, did, it. and all I got was but the neighbor was worried about it. Twice, it, twice I've I asked. Could we ask Steve Edwards? I did. Matt, if he can talk. <laughs> you don't have, Ms. Morgan, we don't have any knowledge of that conversation. Is that fair? Uh, and I'll come in and uh, my intention uh, is to, feels one of the things that I have uh, for you guys for discussion and, uh, you know, feedback next month. Um, and we can certainly invite uh, you know, various town staff members, whether it's stormwater building, uh, flood, camera. Um, to give you guys some feedback on, on all those aspects as it goes forward. Um, but like I said, this is, this is y'all's recommendation, so I think you got a member who'd like to try to vote on it at this point. Yeah, I, I'd like to, to vote that we change the one word to greater for now, and then we can revisit it. Because this is what we're going to send to the council to vote on. Mm -hmm. But we don't understand why we're doing that necessarily, would be my comment on that. We don't, I don't know that we have enough knowledge as to the in full impacts of it to be able to make that statement that we're comfortable with that. That's my feeling on it. What we vote on today is that is this going to town council for them to for immediately them to review and vote on? Yeah, if you guys want to go ahead and make a recommendation today, I would make it now it. versus later because so we're giving them all of this with everything else we've done as one thing to vote on. We're giving them definitions these and the table of uses and it's going to be easier if we want to make any small changes now to do it now versus sending this and then having to come back with a field discussion with different verbiage 
I, I make a motion that we we vote today to change less to greater. Do I have a second? One second. All in favor? One, two, three, four. All opposed? Four to three. But I'd like for us to come back and continue. We will come that. back. We're discussing yeah, Phil next month. <coughs> But okay. we're just changing this okay. one word here. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Gene, you are up. Okay. Uh, page 25. <laughs> under fences. 7.5, 7.2.4. 7 it says, except is prohibited by 7.8.3. That pointer goes to the wrong place. Good catch. Good catch. Thank you, sir. And audio video production? You don't think that covers it? Yeah. Am I? You don't know. Next one too. The it yeah. says seven point eight point six. It's supposed to be pointing inside. What you did, you know, when we moved it. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. Okay. Gotta fix and yes, sir. I remember 7.5, 7.2.4, that last line, um, that if the side yard adjoins the rear property line of a separate lot that is perpendicular to the lot, then a six-foot fence is allowed until the entire side yard up to the property line, except as prohibited. I thought we discussed that because that's the one I was questioning. Yeah, so basically what, because we're talking about when it's adjacent to a corner lot, right? Mm -hmm. um, what I did there was add a, a line, some additional language in 7.5, 7.2.2, um, because that's talking about fences not exceeding six feet, only in the side or the rear yard. Um, and then I, <clears throat> that last kind of after the uh, comma uh, says, except when the side yard is adjacent to a lot line on a corner lot where a six foot fence would be permitted. So basically saying if, if you're adjacent to a corner lot and a six foot fence would be permitted in that corner yard, that corner lot line, then you would be permitted also to have a six foot fence there. Yes, okay. sir. I knew you was going to yep. wordsmith it again, but I, that's what I wanted to check. <laughs> yes, but sir. But just those two pointers right there, we need to. Yes, sir. Change that, those. that should cover that. So if your neighbor is allowed to have a six foot fence because it's a corner lot on that property line, you would be allowed to also have a six yeah, foot fence. Which is what we were. Which I think is what everybody yeah, was talking I, about. I knew you yeah. said there was some other ones I wasn't thinking about, so that takes care of that. Okay. That's all I had, just those two pointers. Very good. You are up. Okay. I'll start with the table of uses, just some high-level things. I believe we have stricken all of the S's. I don't even know that we need the S-special use, um, even in the top, under the very top, table 6.5 because we don't have any S's anymore. They've all been stricken. Um, in addition to that, let's see. Um, I'm still struggling, as I've read through this, why we have a column for industrial district when it is not in the comprehensive land use plan and when it is not currently zoned in the town. Um, so I don't know why we have this. I, after our last conversation on um, cell tower, I mean, on uh, solar farms and wind farms, I did reach out to a buddy of mine who happens to do land planning. He's an attorney. And when I was talking with him about the industrial district, first of all, he did ask an, uh, an interesting question. And he asked if we have an attorney that attends our meetings and gives us the legal, and we do not. And he felt really surprised by that because he feels like, that these are almost all going to be legally challenged and that you need an attorney who's versed in this, but that's an aside. He said that if he was an attorney and he was representing someone who was trying to get property rezoned industrial district, he said the fact that we have so many permitted uses, permits, permitted uses, and special regulation, I mean, um, special use with supplemental regulations, that they overlap so many our commercial businesses commercial business, commercial recreational, commercial low density. He said he would make the argument, he believes he would win it, that um, we in fact do have an industrial district by virtue of having a column with permitted uses in it that are so heavily overlapping 
across the others. And he said, if you've already got those permitted uses in others, why are you needing to call out something that you don't even have? So I just, my personal, I would take out the entire column of industrial district. I don't know why um, we would want to have it in there saying that there's a permitted use when we don't have that. And specifically, I would definitely, uh, the ones that jump out at us, penal and correctional facilities. I don't know why we even have that in the table of use, and I think that should be struck. The petroleum bulk storage, I don't know why uh, we need that one. We've already talked about the uh, wind farms, solar farms. I, I'm not going to give those up. But uh, then there's another one, automotive, automobile and motorcycle racing track is another one that is exclusively uh, in these. Um, so again, to me, if we have permitted uses in, in ID, but yet everything else is an overlap with CB, CR, and CLD, and somebody did challenge the fact that we do in fact have industrial because they're so similar to those others, now I feel like we do open the door for somebody to be able to put in a permit for something that we don't want. Um, I'll argue with somebody on, on a solar farm or wind farm, but I'm gonna definitely go to the mat on a penal, you know, um, I don't think we want a prison or a jail or anything like that, a correctional facility in here. So petroleum bulk storage, I think from an environmental concern, automotive and motorcycle racetrack. So again, I would just, my, my first start, sorry to throw the uh, bomb in the floor, I would completely eliminate the industrial district. Um, I'm open to hearing why, People think we should keep it if we don't have it. Um, I understand there's another comprehensive land use plan update that they'll be working on, but I would leave it to that group to determine whether we want to revisit the industrial district or not. So um, I'll put that as a motion to strike the industrial district column in the table of uses. I'd like to hear from Matt on to why he feels sure. it's important to have. Absolutely. Um, so one, I would entirely disagree with your friend's assessment um, right. that because uh, there are a lot of uses that are only permitted in the industrial district. So just because there are is some overlap with They're the like CLD eight. doesn't mean that those other ones. Uh, <clears throat> and as we've mentioned a couple of times, when you evaluate and this is by our ordinance and it's by common practice, too, when you evaluate uh, a zoning map amendment for a new district. Say someone wants to go into the industrial district. Uh, this board and the town council uh, is required to evaluate all of the uses in that district, regardless of what they get up there and say they're going to do. You have to look at it and say, oh, well, they're getting up there and saying that they want to do a laundromat. Well, you have to consider the fact that they could also do a penal colony or any of these other uses. Uh, you can't just base it on the applicant's testimony that this is all we're going to do. Mm -hmm. You have to consider all the uses. Um, if you were to remove the ID district, um, the the uses that are in the table uh, where, the, where those are only permitted in the ID district, you have... Uh, via zoning prohibited those uses in the town. And as we've talked about a couple of times, anytime you zone out a legal use of property, you need to have a very in-depth discussion. And you've heard this from Wes uh, when he came and gave your training too, about why that particular use is a public health safety hazard specific to your community before you use zoning to exclude a legal use of property. Um, if you remove that table, all those all those uses, you have done that. You have said, oh, these are all no longer allowed in our town at all via the zoning. Well, let's say you go a step farther and remove those entries specifically from the table of uses. Let's say we're, we're just not going to list you know, penal colonies uh, at all in our table of ordinances. Um, if you don't have something listed in your ordinance in your table of uses, it is allowed in your town, period. But can't we designate <laughs> that as not permitted? Well, that's can't what we? I'm getting at is that this okay. board hasn't discussed these individual uses and how there are a public health safety uh, environmental hazard to the degree that if someone came back and challenged you, you would probably have a hard time at that point because you haven't had that discussion. 
Um, you've brought it up certainly, but you haven't delved into the, the details of those specific items and what type of public health, safety, uh, environmental hazards they contribute to the town. But once, um, you, but we can always entertain that at any point. We can always add one back. I mean, taking them out and or stating that they're not permitted, at least states that they're not permitted, whether it's an industrial or non-industrial. And by the way, there are 63 uses right now in that, and I would bet that there are probably 10 um, that are designated, that are only an, uh, an item in that one particular column, five of those which I've already mentioned. So again, I don't know why keeping something in that we know we don't want so that we can give town council an argument if a petitioner comes up. It, this is like trying to plan for all the what if scenario, make them non-permitted, take them out of the table of uses, if we want to revisit it and then add it back, we can always add back the industrial district and we can also come back and add a specific use for that industrial district. So the, the, the challenge you run into is you, if you take it out without having those considerations that I just mentioned to you had in detail, you do take it out of town council's hands. You put it in a legal proceeding. Well, they're going to vote on all of these well, when they adopt the table of uses. So, at so town someone council. comes in and says, uh, we want to set up this use that the town doesn't allow, but we don't know why you don't allow it, right? It's just listed as a thing. They then take that to court and say that the town has used their zoning authority to prohibit this use without taking the proper considerations into account. And then a judge comes in and tells us that you guys did this wrong. You have to permit this in the town. And we have taken that completely out of the hands of the town council and this board at that point. Um, so what I want to try to avoid, and you can, once again, it's your recommendation. If you want to take it out, take it out. But what I want to try to avoid is the situate, that specific situation where so a petitioner comes in and wants to establish a use that's listed in our table of uses is not permitted in the town at all. And when we tell them it's not permitted in their town at all, they come back, they look at the minutes, they look at the video, they say, well, they just took it out because they don't want it. Uh, they take that to a judge, to court, to a court proceeding and say that we did that improperly. And then the judge says, well, that was an improper consideration. How long of a discussion in our minutes do we have to talk about it during e each of those five things? Because now we've talked about it two different meetings. And instead of somebody coming to the town council, I mean, to the planning board and saying, hey, here are the five things that you need to evaluate each of these under. And let's have that conversation so that we can make them non-permitted. Uh, you feel like we're better to leave them in there and as, as a minority set of the end of the industrial district that actually I would argue there there are probably it I think there are 10 out of what those 63 so you've got you know less than 20 percent of your uses are designated for that every other use you already allow in a commercial business commercial recreational commercial low density I I'm not believe I think we're actually at more risk for somebody coming in here and arguing that we in fact have an industrial district. You even heard um, him refer to the airport district as an industrial district. I, I feel like we're leaving the door way open here and I, I don't know why. Now to your point, if we want to take these out at, before we send this to town council, but I feel like we're closing some loopholes here that I don't know why we want to keep them open. I mean, Honestly, let's have that discussion. I'm going to put my two cents in here. One, Oak Island isn't big enough to put a prison in. <laughs> That's, I agree. Two, I, I agree not with all that. There's vacant land for a win. Well, no, go across 211. There is. Not in Oak Island's territory. There's not Oak, in Oak Island's city limits. Okay, on 211 near Pine, Pine Forest, mm -hmm. there's, there's ample land up there, open land, that Pine Forest could sell because it's not going to redevelop, and they could put any one of these things up there. But it would be residential. Okay, there's CLD right here. Uh -huh. okay. okay, go ahead. Um, look, if this is a, if we want to leave this we're, loophole we're in here, that's fine. I feel like we need an attorney in this room to actually help us with some of this the, stuff. The and, types of uses in the industrial district that we're concerned about need much more land than what we have to offer. To be viable. So the reality of something like that coming in is going to be very, very slim. But we have the industrial district in just to cover our legal 
perspective that said we do have it, but it's not permitted in anything other than that one district. Which I believe somebody can come in and make an argument and say, by virtue of the overlap that you have between industrial district and the other three, you in fact, and that you have it in your table of well, uses, we you in fact do, do that, have an industrial we do district. That with residential and commercial, there's different things that overlaps in both of them. Right, but they're all approved. This one's not approved. Industrial okay. district is what we don't want to have as a problem. All right, do we want to call a vote on? Well, I mean, there's a motion on the floor. It, and it doesn't have to be seconded. the motion on the floor? But I really think that we're open more than, than, than what we believe. And I would, I would welcome having a legal opinion. I would obviously, and I'm not saying, Matt, your opinion isn't valid. I think it's, you know, the most valid of all of us. But I still want to challenge, I, I just do believe. Well, the reason you don't have an attorney here is this is an advisory board. Um, yeah, but that's so okay. But we're that making you make is binding in this town point, council so. will make the final decision across the state. Planning boards are advisory boards, so the fact that some planning boards do have an attorney because all these things become legal oh. issues and how you operate versus you know they become legal issues. So if we're if they're starting here, wouldn't we want to take the legal aspect into consideration in some of these things? To me, this one rises to that, and I'm only saying that because. We know that we don't want an industrial district, and we know that we don't want some of these things in here. And I hear your arguments. I don't think they're, they're enough to stop a petitioner who has good counsel to come in here and really take. Um, uh, we have a motion. Yeah. Do we have a second? What is the motion again? Can we? The motion is to remove the industrial district column from the table of uses and all uses that are only in the industrial district. Which was 10? Approximately 10. Uh, penal and correctional systems, I mean, I can go through it real quick. Penal and correction systems uh, was one. Recycling center is one. Uh, we don't allow it in anything else. Um, we have cold storage plant is only allowed. Um, We've got light manufacturing, heavy manufacturing, mining and quarrying operations, um, petroleum bulk storage, reclamation landfill. Um, we have automobile and motorcycle racing, uh, gun range, open air. Um, and again, I go back to your point. Yes, there is not the land for any of these, but um, and then we have Solar farms, wind farms, and that is pretty much it. If I'm missing one by going really quickly, I'm going. But again, none of those things we want, and so I would, you know, maybe maybe we want light manufacturing and heavy manufacturing. I don't know. Maybe we don't. Maybe we do. But th those could go in a CLD or a CB if we wanted to move that there and keep it. Uh, truck terminals. Truck wash are two others that are distinct. Agricultural product warehousing, salvage yards, junkyards, automobile graveyards, where well, we might argue we have one of those already. Warehouses, um, solar farms, wind farms. So, okay, we again. have a motion to strike the industrial district totally from the table of uses. Do we have a second? Being that we have no second. There you go. Okay. Comment was raised, though. I appreciate it. Okay. okay. Um, now, and we don't want to do things like individually strike penal and correctional facility no. from. We're going to leave all that in. Okay. All right. I would be open to discussing it at a later date with. Well, and I would, too. I w ideally, if we're sending the whole thing to the mm -hmm. town council to vote on, to I feel like that's where I feel a little like, are we going to take this, send this to them several times? Um, or is it just going one time? The and that's maybe it will get reviewed uses. before they vote on it yeah. and there will be an okay. attorney yep. present. Okay. Thank you. All right. On per page four. Um, we define, we, we talk about yard, I mean, front yard. I wonder if a definition, do we have a definition for front yard? <laughs> yeah, it's up on the top, 7.9.3. I'm in uh, um, 7.9.3 at the very top of page four. We talk about front yard because we talk about that from the standpoint. Hold on, hold on. Do you want a different? Hang on. I just want page 21. 
of the supplement. Tw- oh, 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 sorry, 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 guys. Thank you so much. Page 24. <laughs> sorry, page 24. <laughs> Very top line. Okay. We talk about front yard here, and we talk about front yard in a couple of other places as it relates to buffers. And so one, I know like on the beach, for example, some people refer to the street side as the front yard. Others refer to the beach side as the front yard. And I thought it might be good to just clarify what front yard means. And then because we do introduce the concept of buffers for front yard with some of the manufacturing and, and different things, if we should put a buffer add, not tonight, not today, but add a buffer section that deals with front yard buffer. Um, <clears throat> yes, the ordinance defines yards, all the different yards. It's it under, does? Okay. It's under Y. It has yard, comma, front, comma, Sorry, rear, comma, side. Um, we already defined street yard buffers um, in the, as well in the performance standards of the ordinance. So those are our, the, the size, placement, and location of those okay. is in our performance standards. So, so yes, sir. say that last part again, and I apologize, I missed the definition, but go ahead with the. Um, the, the size, placement, and location of what, uh, I assume you're referring to the street yard buffer requirements. Yes. Um, those are in our performance standards in the UDO, so that's uh, Article 10 of the Unified Development Ordinance covers okay, all the but landscape are they in, buffer but, but they're not in the buffer section with yeah. the other buffers, A, B, C, and D. Street yards are under 10.4 street yard requirements. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Under I'll landscape. Okay. Um, under private clubs, lodges, we, um, for special regs, do we need to call out in several of these anything related to maintaining the appropriate licensure for um, those types of things like no, a, they have to maintain their alcohol license or they don't serve product. Yeah, that's so in the, the definition state. that's enforced by the de- no that's the enforced by the state okay I tell you what I have no more comments <laughs> no, and I, I'll I kind no of explain that because um, we've talked about that a couple of times here at this board um, and this is you know solely to, to let you know this um, Let's say we have a requirement in there that somebody have some sort of license that's administered by another state agency or by another local state federal agency, but it's a zoning requirement. Um, now you put the the zoning administrator in the local municipality adds on that burden of having to ensure that that license is kept and renewed, et cetera when that's already a responsibility of a separate agency. Um, so we used to have, a, and the, the board actually removed a few of those before where we had like for daycares or something like that, that they had to be licensed, but they have to be licensed by the, by the Health and Human Services in order to operate. Um, it just puts an additional burden on staff to maintain a record of who's licensed and when their license is up and when it needs to be renewed, et cetera. So that's where that comes from. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. I have no other comments. Go ahead. Here. Me? Okay. So um, in the interest of moving on, um, I put before each of y'all a, a table, just a little snapshot of a theoretic layout of the table of uses where really um, it's just a suggestion to group them, right? So that you put the residential all together, and again, our, you know, our, our our mission given by town council is to make the town the, the the table of uses easily more easy to read, understandable, simpler to comprehend. So that's the only suggestion I had was just to map put the headings up there that's and put idea. the is that okay? Mm-hmm. And then um, and then also, I was in agreement with uh, Mr. Gilbert to remove the S, the special use, because we don't have those anymore. Yeah. It was also mm-hmm. part of our mission was to kind of clean that up. And then um, what we, some of us, all of us actually, saw in the planning board training that we went to last week that, you know, some of the best practice of a table of uses included like a double dash where things are not permitted so that it's very clear that that is a not permitted item, either an X or a dash dash, as opposed to blanks in all these boxes. I think just visually that would make it a lot more clear to everybody. So that was just a suggestion that I had just on the layout itself, not a huge change. Um, and then as I'll, what I'll do is go through the table of uses with just my notes of things, um, and hopefully I'll go quickly with this. But just as a reminder, you know, what we learned last week was if it's not listed here on this table of uses, there's several things that can happen, right? So let's all be clear on what that is. You know, um, 
It can be an administrative decision to tie to the most closely related type of use. Um, we could try to add something as a text amendment, probably post somebody applying for something, which is not ideal, right? And then the courts have said, if there's any amb amb ambiguity, ambiguity, I can't say that word for some reason today, <laughs> um, the courts have found, have leaned toward right of use of the land, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. individual property rights okay. so um, so just to be clear that's why we want to try to make sure that many things are covered in this table of uses and we all we all learned about that last week okay so um, just a suggestion on page 35 under recreation again we learned last week and this had not come to me Matt do we have any coverage for electronic gaming here in our table of uses um, that came up as one of the things that was discussed by some other cities and counties that had become a thing. Mm -hmm. um, are we covered with too. electronic like gaming? Like gambling. Yeah, it was. I mean, um, are we, if we're good, we're good. I just wanted to bring, I had made a note while we were in the class last week. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so we could certainly include it um, in the definition of something. I don't know. Well, it really depends on which tack you want to take. Um, if it's not already covered. Um, I think Mr. Uh, Persher said that he saw it in there already. Um, this is a lot of material, so you have to forgive me if I'm not uh, up on all of it right off the, right off the top of the head. Um, but if we find that we're not covered, that's something that we can either add to an existing definition or cover it somewhere else in the ordinance. It would depend on whether you want to like lump it in with like uh, indoor recreation or whether you want to establish an electronic gaming type of uh, use and I regulated. I think just indoor recreation would be appropriate, would it not? Um, Are we talking about gambling specifically? Is that what we're talking about? Okay. And we may have it in there. Hang on. I mean, now that it's it, legal it in the state in the of the North Carolina, uses, or I guess I'm mean, looking betting. for it now. I mean, when you, when you say indoor gaming, I mean, we have, we have an arcade electronic gaming and I think that what they were talking about is games of skill versus games of chance and yeah. and now that gambling much sports betting is now legal that I think the, the point was this could become more and more an issue for oh, cities and for counties. For the bigger cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Just a comment. Yeah we, we can certainly work on a, a definition if that's something we want to work up and, and or make sure the table we, ordinances. Absolutely. Yeah or make sure we wrap that into the definition for indoor recreation if that's where we want to include it. I think we just should acknowledge it. Yeah. Um, with it with it being legal, can we, like we've sort of done with the adult entertainment businesses where we exclude those, we say those are not prohibited in certain definitions or regulations, would we need to address it specifically or no, just define it? Well, so it, it depends on what level we're talking about because I do know that with the, the state legislation, there, there's only a couple of places that are even allowed to, to start up what would be considered like a, a casino mm -hmm. type of mm -hmm. development. Um, and electronic sports betting uh, is done on your phone now, so you guys could have been uh, in here okay. gambling on the NBA playoffs while we're in the mm -hmm. <laughs> meeting if you wanted to. Um, but it's, I, I worked in jurisdictions where it was a problem, so it's definitely – now that the state laws have changed a little bit, I'll take a little bit of a critical eye towards it. And if there's something we need to do, uh, I'll make sure to bring that back to you okay. as soon as possible. Absolutely. So that, I'm just going to add that on my list as later things to consider. Yeah, right? Okay. All right. Then under residential, again, um, just bringing up the, the ADU issue, I, I would like to make that a, a future item for us to discuss. I think we sort of went down that path already mm -hmm. so that as a future item just to figure out what do we want that to be in our community you know what does that look like it's probably a, a bigger discussion um just wanted to confirm dwelling single family large that's still um allowed over four thousand square feet for lots over thirteen square thousand square feet correct matt it's a special use yes ma'am yes. okay. all right and then uh, floating homes, um, I thought we talked about that um, under that uh, regulation that there was something about them being permanently affixed and whether or not we should add some stipulations around public health and safety. You know, I'm thinking of electrical connections, plumbing. You know, in other words, do, do they have to comply with residential building code requirements? Because I didn't see anything in the, in the regulation that we stated that relate, that attack those things. Yeah, we can certainly add that if the board wants to, to make a note. And and I apologize, I thought I had included uh, a definition in here for that. And what I was going to do was 
add that part about it being permanently affixed to the how you define a floating home, basically. Okay. Um, I read something. Uh, I read something got, about it somewhere. Yeah. I just I know I did too, but I, I, I apologize. We don't have any jurisdiction. No, so it's, a, yeah, that's it's a boat at that point. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, Still a house. Yeah, yeah, it's a valid point. Oh. But yeah, if y'all want to, yeah, especially the, add the I don't even see a stuff. definition. No. Yeah. I apologize. I had intended to put I, that in. I read some, something about it, though. I just so you want to cover that as a definition, later. Matt? I, I think the permanently affixed part would be a definition, <laughs> and then the the building code stuff that you're talking about for, like, electrical code and all that, that would go under the supplemental regulations. Um, yeah, so I, that would be my suggestion, is that we add items related to public health and safety to the 7.104. I have the wrong classes today. I think that's the right regulation. If everybody's in agreement with that. We are. Okay. Um, thank you, Matt, for the grouping of automotive. Thank you so much. Yes. I know I was harping on that. My apologies, and I appreciate oh. your uh, consideration there. Um, there were a few things that I thought maybe should be rolled up under that, like battery charging station, battery exchange station, um, Gas sales operation. Home is here. Um, there may have been others I'll get to as I go through the list, but um, but moving the battery charging stations because literally those are automotive functions, right? Whether it be tr and there was also something about trucks. So if we could just battery make sure that battery charging would there. If you think about that, look at some of the hotels and places like that that were popping up with battery charging. That's why. No, I'm not. I'm not suggesting changing any of the uses oh. or where they can go. I'm just saying make it oh, automotive it battery charging, automotive battery exchange, just so that everything related to automotive is grouped together. Is all I was suggesting. Oh, okay. That's it. I um, if you're, Matt, if you can take a look, and that's just a cosmetic yeah. thing for me. Um, there was also a note from the planning board training about um, cities and counties considering drone delivery hubs in the future. <laughs> yeah. Matt. Matt, you sure just Matt, you sure just uh, no, it's, it's always funny how new, like, that was. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's always going to be something new. Um, but Change definitely something for us to think yeah. about. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I had, thought it had never even occurred to me, but yeah, absolutely. Um, Especially us, you know, we don't have large shopping centers and whatnot. I, I can imagine that um, Amazon's going to start dropping things off at my I'll house. Like, don't give me a business idea. I'm like, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> oh, it's a planning game. <laughs> All right, um, keep moving. Okay, moving, sorry, moving to page 38. Um, exterminating and pest control services. It's a PS, but there's uh, no regs or definition on that, Matt. And I think you have some somewhere. I think we talked about that. Uh, yeah, hang on. Bear with me just At least the table of uses doesn't refer to a regulation on it. Oh, okay, well, yeah, I do have some. I just need to yeah, fix Yeah, again, that. Like, probably a cleanup thing. Yeah. No worries. Yes, ma'am. Thank um, you. Um, golf cart and low-speed vehicle sales and rentals. Um, there was also a discussion about storage of those items. Don't see that we added anything about how they can and where they can be stored. Um, because we already have some ordinances related to the storage of golf, for golf cart sales and rentals. Yes, so we're good? We, we already have those regulations. Right. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Biggest thing for me is um, 7.106 for hotels and motels. That's the only regulation that we feel like we need associated with hotels and motel. So I refer everybody to jump over to 7.106. 7 what page is that? Uh, 32. 7.106, hotels and motels. There's only DB zoning district limited to density of 55 rooms per acre. So I just was curious as to where that density number came from. And then also, I think there's there have been concerns about height with hotels and motels, what counts within the height limitations, um, and then um, impervious surface parking, buffering requirements. Shouldn't all that be part of the supplemental regulations? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I can, I can touch on some or all of that. Okay. Um, okay. So the density calculation that we came up with there was based on existing hotels here in the town. Um, so we've talked about a few times wanting to 
match what we want going forward with what we have, right? Okay. So we looked at some hotels, looked at the acreage and the number of rooms in the hotel and said, okay, this this is about where everything is. So this is where we're going to set our peg at okay. um, for density. Um, buffer yard, lighting, parking, stormwater management, all that's covered somewhere else unless we want to go higher uh, for this specific use. And we have done that in some other areas. So if, if that's something this board wants to consider, um, certainly can. Um, height's a little tricky because we're, because the height limitation for things on the island is set by referendum. Um, so we get into a little bit of a, how do we amend that going forward? Because it can only be, it can be changed by a referendum. It's not about too, uh, my point wasn't about changing the height. It was about what counts within our current right. heights. Yeah. Limitations. Um, because I think in a recent application, there was an issue of where, they went over the height it went restriction 50, because there was feet, I believe. Yeah, there was a different. There was a mechanical uh, unit yep. on the roof of said application that right. somehow didn't get counted in the height. Sure. Yeah, and I, I can. That's my point. Is how do we address those things so that doesn't happen in the future? Yeah. So our ordinance specifically calls out certain things that are exempt from our height limitations. Uh, one of those is mechanical um, mechanical things, um, mechanical equipment. Uh, you usually see that applied to things like air conditioning is where you want to put mm -hmm. it on the roof uh, of a structure. Um, in the, the, what you run into there is uh, when there's publicly accessible rooftop access, right? So if you've got a, a rooftop access that's open to the public, um, the fire code requires that you have mechanical access to that for, for if you need to get a... Um, a stretcher up there for somebody to get them out. You know, they can't, uh, um, elevator is going to be better than stairs in that instance. And in fact, the, the fire code requires that you have an elevator access to that top floor uh, if it's publicly accessible. So in that instance, it, it, that's a mechanical equipment that's required by the fire code. So I, I can't classify it as anything other than a mechanical thing because the building code and the fire code says, hey, this is mechanical equipment that is required for this access. Um, and since that's exempt from, since mechanical equipment is exempt from our height restrictions, then when they come in, I have to go, okay. And we have one, uh, I know we had a recent application one, but we also have one, the town has one uh, at our fire station. There's a uh, elevator access that exceeds the height because it's mechanical and it's required for that access. So um, we, have one as well, <laughs> um, not just other folks uh, that come in uh, for something similar. So um, rules. Yeah, if you yeah. if you wanted to, in some way, restrict that for hotels, you'd have to think about uh, some type of allowance for uh, how you you know restriction on like a rooftop decking type of situation where you would need that. So you take away the need for the elevator, and then you don't have a justification for the elevator. Um, because if you restrict all, like let's say, well, we don't want to allow mechanical equipment to exceed our, our height restrictions, then you're going to impact some of those other, you know, things that you'd probably rather have on a roof, like a uh, an air conditioning that's not in the flood hazard down on the floor or something like that, mm -hmm. um, okay. keeping that mechanical equipment out. Um, so you wouldn't do a blanket. You'd have to kind of backdoor it and say, okay, well, what is the reason we had to have this this thing that we don't want to have and restrict that versus restricting the mechanical equipment itself, um, if that makes sense, uh, hopefully. Okay, well, so main consideration to just, you know, um, stormwater parking, buffering required, um, understand about the 55 density, I get that. Mm -hmm. So if we could just add something related to defining that. Um, Page 39, radio and TV stations, uh, studios, uh, says need to draft regs, but I didn't see any, Matt, did I? Um, we include, just hold that out? Yeah, we included that um, in one discussion that I don't think we came up with any in the meeting for like additional impacts we were trying to do. So um, certainly if the board later item. thinks of any, we can okay. do that, absolutely. Um, restaurants without drive-through in CR district. 
and we probably, my apologies to everybody, we probably should have caught this before, but should there not be some regulations around that? Because CR is on the beach, right, Matt? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we don't, we want, I mean, any restaurant should probably have some supplemental regulations around down there, right? But I don't know, maybe not. Just Michael, what? what would we need? We've already got in the building, they've got the buffers, they've got the height restrictions. What other regulations do you want? I'm just to yeah, my question is from a planning perspective, or from a development perspective, a new restaurant that would come up in CR district. I don't argue about any of the other districts yeah. and what's there, but C C R is a little bit different because it's right down on the beach, Correct. right? And would there be? But it could be. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I saw most of the C R. So that's just a comment. We don't have to take it up. Just a comment. Um, on restaurants with drive-through, um, section 7.9, just curious as to whether that is or sufficient. Um, maybe they are. We talked, we did a lot of discussion about it, totally get it. Um, but I mean, or I think just wanted to raise a discussion about these things that we've included here. Do we feel those are perfectly sufficient for drive-throughs? Maybe they are. I did have one question. 7.90.5, drive-through stacking shall not encroach into vehicular travel lanes or right-of-way. Mm -hmm. um, how would that be enforced? So uh, what we would do there is uh, identify their stacking, their anticipated stacking on their site plan. Um, so when someone comes in they, for development, they do a major site plan or a minor site plan, depending on the scale of it. Uh, in this instance, it would be a special use, uh, I think. Um, but anyway, um, we would identify that on their site plan. If whatever they've done has proved to be inadequate and they're constantly backing out, um, we'd have to come at them and say, hey, you guys need to figure this out, uh, how to design your site or how to how to stack it appropriately so that it's not happening. Is that if a standard blocking, for hmm? expected stacking room? Uh, yes. They're... Um, it, I'll say this, usually um, most larger businesses that are going to have a lot of drive-through um, usually have anticipated stacking requirements for their businesses um, and having dealt with some of them in uh, going through traffic studies and things like that, it, it can be down to like the second of how many people they need and how fast they need to get them out. Um, so there are some standards out there for, for what that looks like, and that's what we evaluate or ask them to evaluate as a part of their application. Okay. Now, you're, you're never going to catch everything, right? You're going to have the one day where there's 9 million people there, right. and that's going to well, happen. Right, well, that's kind of um, what I was thinking from our business that we owned. We, we There were times when we had a special event sure. where we had an enormous amount of stacking space. Yeah. And, and the police were having to... You kind of looked at force people to drive by, and you kind of looked at look at that like um, you plan for regular business operations. Right, right. You don't necessarily plan for a black swan event because you want the the environment to match what's happening there ninety ninety five percent of the time. Oh, yeah. You don't want to plan it for the five percent yeah. that happens. So you know, once in a blue moon. Out. Yes, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you get a giant parking lot because they all plan for Black Friday, and the parking lot's empty most of the year. Yeah. Um. Just moving on so we can move on. <laughs> so um, again, on this page, on page 40, there's several things, you know, towing, truck stop, truck terminals, truck wash. Um, some of that maybe not so relevant because it's in the industrial district, which we'll address at, as a future item. Um, airports and related uses, there's a need to draft there, Matt, so I guess that's a future thing for us to work on as well. No, there, there's a section in there. I'm, I just need to fix that. Um, there should be a supplemental regulation in, associated with that. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. That's no, okay. No, th thank you for pointing it out. I need to fix all this stuff that's not in there. Well, just, just in the interest <laughs> of time, if you'll just put the, the reference there. I yes, yes ma'am. And then again, on the taxi stands, um, we, um, we wanted to add uh, shuttle pickups and um, ride Crawlers. share in the definitions and draft around that. I know we have some... Um, I know we have some definition on it, but um, yeah. we have an SSNCB, but no regs. So, and then we, I think we had agreed that we would add that as permitted in the airport district as well. 
for tax season, ride share, and whatnot without, without too much restrictions. It's interesting that Southport trolley is going to start. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah, I was thinking about that, but I guess that really wouldn't pertain to us because nobody's proposing a stand. <laughs> They're doing drop off, I think, we at Coco Cabana only, uh, and develop, Lazy Turtle, but so. I didn't know if that. Well, we have, nonetheless, in CB, we have SS, so there need to be some regulations there. And all I'm suggesting is that we include shuttle pickup places potentially and mm -hmm. um, ride share pickup if those would be centralized or anything like that. Um, no definition on wholesale sales. And I had a note that we had said we were going to put a definition. Um, storage outside completely enclosed structure. These are on page 41, y'all. I apologize. Um, no, do we have a good definition as to what defines enclosed? It's just a theoretical thing I'm throwing out there for us to think about. Um, wireless communication facilities. Um, we've got 60 feet, and I had some notes in our prior discussions about a 50 foot limit. Yeah, because I think the supplemental regulations is what was it's tagged to 50 is what we had discussed. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's a thank you. That we'll You'll fix that, that to the 50. Okay, great. Almost done, guys. Okay, and then we move to the definitions. Just a few comments there. Uh, carport, um, in our past, in our UDO review, um, there was a comment. I had a note somewhere that we should add detached um, carports as allowed in 2.12, Matt. Of the UDO, and again, this wasn't in table of uses discussion. This was when we were going through the UDO that somebody made the comment that if we're going to allow carports, they should be the detached are allowed in two dot one two of the UDO. Um, so, do we need to do we need to say that in the definitions? Is is the question? Uh, car, a detached carport is treated as an accessory structure okay. under our ordinance currently. Um, so it, it would be permitted in those residential okay. zoning districts. Mm -hmm. All right, gotcha. Almost there, guys. Uh, page 60. Uh, impervious surface. I think we talked about making a definition it's got a built upon area definition there. <coughs> so, is there a definition of impervious surface for, for clarity? Um, what? Bear with me just a second here. I'm now looking at two or three different things. Um, yeah, so <coughs> what we can do is stick in. Um, impervious surface and reference it back to built upon area because built upon mm -hmm. area, the first words in that are impervious surface and partially impervious surface. Um, so yeah, we just do impervious surface and see built Point upon back. area. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's a good idea there. Okay. I think I'm going to miss it again. Okay. Uh, last, uh, last thing on page 79 was again in the taxi stand. Maybe we revise that, that description because it should include shuttle pickup, ride share type things just to encompass all those types of transportation options. And that's all I'm done. Thank you for bearing with me. Ladies and gentlemen. Did you have any, did you? I am good, Okay. honestly. I've, what about person? Yeah, I was about to say David. Oh, oh <laughs> yes, I totally forgot. I skipped him and didn't go back. <laughs> Y'all are so thorough, this is simple. But uh, I thought um, page 64, Marina, uh, any publicly or privately owned dock basin wet boat storage facility constructed to accommodate more than 10 boats or providing was more restrictive, I thought. Because um, currently you're saying you have to have yeah. 10 boats and you have to offer this, this, and this to be considered a marina. Good catch. Yeah, it should be or. That's how we. Or. That's how we've uh, applied it. Okay. It's yeah, I just either or. It says but, and, yeah. which makes me say, mm -hmm. yeah, I need ten Good boats point. and this to be considered a marina. Good point. Or. Okay, that's it. Good one. Good one. 
Okay, Lisa. <laughs> well, I'm just going to make one statement first. Um, I have not read through this extremely thoroughly myself yet, so there may be some commas or a period or something like that. Of course, we would not have any content changes. Okay. So we need to have a motion to send this to the council for their review and approval. That would to be incorporate the changes that were and voted to incorporate on today. the changes that mm -hmm. were discussed today. Do we feel? Do we feel we want to review anything that was dealt with? And that, no. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry, Uncle. Um, we have <coughs> death many times. Um, I do have one thing. Yes. To, and then I will. You totally can be quiet. introduce that to Lisa. <laughs> okay. And okay. Matt. So. So, guys, we created, many of you are new on the board, um, but during the UDO review, uh, we created, um, the prior chairman and I created a, an Excel spreadsheet of all the changes that we did to the UDO, as well as some suggestions about what things, some things that should be looked at within the table of uses and the associated regulations and definitions. And so I just, as a final check before this goes to council, I, um, I went through and sorted and filtered, and I'll pass this down. You can take a quick look, and then that one should end up with Lisa to the to Madam Clerk, and this one should land with Matt. Matt. But this is just a list, and it's really just, Matt, a, a final check before we go through to council and make sure that all the things that came through as, as discussion items through the UDO process, we've also picked up, and I'm sure we have. I'm sure we've covered the majority of these things, but I'd just like to make a request, Matt, that if you'll just check off that, yes, we covered that, yes, we did, or we didn't. And I'm happy to update and, the Excel, or you can. Yeah, I it, can send you the Excel package if you'd like. Yeah, and, and anything, um, you know, if this board goes ahead and makes a recommendation today, anything that's not, we can certainly bring it right back to you guys um, to, to tweak it. I don't, uh, you know, especially if it's, I know we've had several things that we want to discuss further, or, you know, if there's mm -hmm. a, a small tweak in there that we need to make and say, I don't mind going back to council and being like, we need to fix this because we missed it. <laughs> and that's, not, that's not a big deal. Um, absolutely. So, so just as you guys a courtesy, you, you, can, you can take a look yeah, at that absolutely. And if you yes, need yes. anything from mm -hmm. me. I just want to make sure we've covered everything sure. from, um, from that UDO conversation. And then as a revisit, just things I wrote down to cover later, just so we all agree and, and Madam Clerk can. Yes, I was going to suggest that you put that on just as a, at least as a staff report or something for the next agenda just so that everybody's aware and maybe even something that the board may want to consider. Okay, let's take about this up in this month or this up in this month do you, or I prioritize them. Do you want me to just lay these out real quick and then? Yeah. Or if you, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so dark sky lighting, um, take up lighting as a under the lighting standard separately, um, ADUs and other accessory structures, number of allowed, et cetera. Um, um, fill policy, um, looking at 7.8, Point three specifically, um, the industrial district, the uses and whether we need that, want to agree to keep that, um, and then may potentially consider uses for electronic gaming stores, centers, cafes, whatever you call it, and drone delivery hubs. Was there anything? Did I miss anything? What I got. Okay. Got it. All right. Okay, good. The I first box that. stated to remove the O and I district. <laughs> Mm -hmm. How is that different than removing the industrial industrial district? Uh, let me see what my notes here. I'm not trying to open a can of worms. Just <laughs> stating one second. You just did. One second. <laughs> you can you can remove something. The next minute you don't need to. You it's something. Yeah, because I, I don't think there were any specific uses exclusive to the O and I. Um, so those uses that. just got moved into... They were already in a different district. Okay. Yeah, and I've got the old... This is the old uh, September yeah. 2023 table of uses, and that's that was the issue. The, all those uses were covered somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's Good question, doubling though. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good question. Just, just trying to be Goldberg fair. Had, <laughs> okay. I had mentioned earlier in this... Uh, I don't know if it was today or previous day about wanting to talk about buffers in general. So did we oh, add that oh, to that buffers. list or okay. okay? That was a couple of minutes ago. Okay. Can I make a motion for us to send the definitions and table of uses to town council for their review? 
and special, and regulations. Regulations. And special Re regulations. As amended today. As amended today. I'll second. All in favor? Unanimous. Woohoo. Good deal. So now we got monkeys on their back now. <sighs> <laughs> okay, we have no new business, Lisa. No, sir. About board members' reports. Nothing. Gene? Nothing. Gary? Did he said nothing. Yeah, oh, I said, nothing. said nothing. Oh, um, board member reports. Oh, first of all, I'd just like to thank um, our community, the staff, and town council for allowing us to do the planning board training last week. I hope everybody found it as beneficial as I did. I took copious notes, and because I've been working through this packet, I haven't gone back through to see what my key learnings were. But it was interesting to me. We met a lot of really nice people who shared a lot of our common challenges, and so it was very helpful, and I, I'm very much appreciative of the opportunity. Um, I will not be able to attend the May meeting, and um, part of that will be related to some surgery that I have to have, so I would ask for um, to be excused from the May meeting, if that's okay. Okay, can I make a motion that we excuse Carrie for medical reasons from the May meeting? Second. All in favor? Thank you. Approved. You're excused. Oh, Mark. Uh, only thing I have, I'd like to echo um, on the training. Very beneficial, and thanks to the town for supporting that. Nothing. Good. I want to echo everyone on uh, Lisa and Matt and the town for allowing us to go through that training. It was very valuable. Uh, immensely picked up a lot of stuff. That is my report, and I do want to say thank you to each and every one of you for the dialogue, the questions today, the back and forth. This is what we need. Uh, very much appreciate it. Thank you. Any other before we adjourn? Okay. Staff member. Yeah, um, no major reports for me. I do want to thank everybody on this board um, for the tremendous effort that y'all have put forth in uh, working on these UDO revisions that you just recommended to town council. I've said this a couple of times, but um, when I've told other planners what we're doing here uh, and that we're doing it all in-house with, with me and the board, and they're like, are you insane? Uh, <laughs> um, so it's a testament to y'all's hard work that we've, that we've got through this effort. Um, really appreciate that. Um, and I do want to thank everybody and thank staff, uh, the planning staff specifically, for uh, supporting me while I was out of the office recently. Um, if anybody was at town council or uh, saw the video, uh, what I've heard is that uh, Brady Golden specifically did a tremendous job um, representing the town staff at the town council meeting. So if you see him, uh, give him a pat on the back. Um, he's really a, a great asset to the town, and we're glad to have him. Um, but everybody who was uh, helpful or reached out or uh, supported the town uh, while I was out, I uh, want to say thank you. I appreciate it. Hopefully you recovered well, um, easily. Re recovered enough to be here on a Monday morning, so. <laughs> I, have a, I have a couple of questions for you, Matt. Um, um, when you can, and you can do this for the May agenda or whatever, but just an update on some of the things that are pending to go to town council, which yes, I know you've been out, so I won't put you on the spot about that. But Absolutely. we have several things that we've worked on that I think are still pending to go to council. And then the Chapter 32 updates for the vegetation ordinance, um, it was my understanding um, that there was some developmental community training and updates that were to be done maybe a week or two ago. Um, do you know any status of that in light of uh, uh, some changes? I believe Rick Patterson was putting those on. Um, most of them occurred while I was out of the office, but I can definitely check in and see what the status is on that. Yeah, um, the feedback yeah, that I was yeah. just getting from different in members of the community of development members as well builders, whatnot, when is somebody going to train us and teach us and tell yeah. us what we need to know? It, and that's very critical because there are a lot of changes. Rick's still here. I brought that up, and they it is being worked on. Okay. Yeah. And then I, I thought we put some on, but I can definitely yeah. find out what happened with that. And then, later. Madam Clerk, how quickly does that get uploaded into Muni Code? Because I notice it's not. It's, it's not. on the homepage there. It they, is. It is. Um, they only update our ordinances quarterly. We've asked them about pricing for if they would update them monthly instead, but it is at least on their homepage. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Matt.
Thank you for yeah, all absolutely. your support. I just want to say that through Appreciate this whole it. table of uses process. <clears throat> Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. I vote.